Didn't you just say I'm ugly? Why won't you let me go? Maddie asked one of them. Well, I guess this guy is interested in you. I have to help him, the man said. Maddie was well aware of what this person meant by help. But what was she to do? Three people surrounded her. How could she escape? Please! Maddie tried to look panicked and pointed ahead. When the three of them looked over, Maddie had already started running. They soon realized she had tricked them, and when they came back to their senses, they saw Maddie running away, so they chased after her. How dare you lie to us! Chase after her! When Maddie heard the sound of footsteps behind her, she was terrified and ran as fast as she could. She felt as if her entire chest was jumping in panic. But no matter how fast she ran, she couldn't outrun three grown men. Soon, the road in front of her was blocked. Why aren't you running anymore? One of the men said with nasty sarcasm. You better let me go, or else... Maddie wanted to threaten him. Or what? The men laughed in a vulgar manner, not caring in the slightest. Otherwise, I'll call the police. Maddie still had some hope in her heart. She hoped that these people could be scared away. However, they weren't scared. Instead, they laughed. Okay, sure, go to the police. One of them teased rudely. Maddie's expression changed when she heard their obscenities. It was extremely disgusting. Just as she was feeling helpless and didn't know what to do, the men came up to her and grabbed her. Let's go. I promise we'll let you have a good time too. Let go! Maddie struggled, but she couldn't stop them. Seeing a couple pass by, she shouted at the top of her lungs, Save me! Save me! Not only did the man and woman not save her, they even quickly shuffled away, not willing to get involved. Maddie's heart turned cold as she looked at them. Why didn't they help her? The men dragged Maddie into an alley where no one was around. Not far away was a trash can, and there was a sour smell coming from it. However, no matter what, it couldn't compare to the fear in Maddie's heart right now. She fell to the ground and looked at the young man who was approaching her, undoing his belt. She was shocked. She did not understand why he wanted her, even when she was so ugly. The man from before said her figure was not bad. Was it her clothes? When she was with Jeff, she always wore such clothes, and it was never a problem. She didn't want to. When the man's hand reached toward her, Maddie was so scared that she closed her eyes and shouted, ah! Just as she cried out, she heard a scream that was even more miserable than her own, and the man's hand never reached her body. She was thinking, what's going on? Maddie opened her eyes nervously. She saw the three men lying on the ground as they moaned in pain while spitting out blood. Then she saw the two long legs in front of her, straight and sturdy. Maddie was stunned. She looked up and saw Jeff's face. He was looking down at her. Maddie looked at him in disbelief. What? A Jeff? Wait, why was Jeff here? Why would Jeff come here? Maddie wondered if she was dreaming, but looking at the three miserable men on the ground, she knew it was real. How long are you going to sit on the ground for? Do you want me to pick you up? Jeff's voice was colder than the weather. Maddie came back to her senses, her expression stiff. She got up from the ground. After pausing for a moment, she turned around and ran. Jeff's face turned completely black. After a whole day of searching, he was in a very bad mood. Not only did Maddie not say thank you, she even wanted to run away. He ran after her at an extremely fast speed and grabbed onto Maddie's collar. Ugh! Maddie could no longer run away. No more running. Jeff huffed. If you carry me, I won't be able to run away, Maddie insisted. Jeff rolled his eyes and shoved Maddie into the car. He would not show any mercy. When Jeff ducked into the car, she curled up by the door, looked at Jeff's dark face and asked, Jeff, you wouldn't want to beat me up, right? 
Jeff sighed and his face softened. Of course not. The car drove away steadily. Jeff looked at her with an expressionless face. Why didn't you go home? Maddie pursed her lips and didn't say anything. Did you not hear me? Jeff frowned. Didn't I already tell you that I don't want to go back? Maddie argued. The reason. There is no reason. I just don't want to go back. Maddie turned her face and looked out the window at the night scenery passing by. Jeff combed his fingers through his neat hair in annoyance. If he hadn't arrived in time, he couldn't bear to think about what would have happened next. Just thinking about it, Jeff's face turned even darker. Noting Jeff's cold face and silence, Maddie promised him carefully, Jeff, don't worry. Even if I don't go back, I won't bother you again. Jeff looked over with a stern expression. Maddie immediately turned her face away. I'll send you back, Jeff said. Maddie was stunned for a moment before she panicked. I don't want to go back. It's not up to you. Maddie was frightened and her face turned pale, and Jeff's black eyes narrowed as he looked at Maddie's reaction. Why was she so frightened when he was only sending her home? He actually became curious and wanted to know what would happen after he sent Maddie back. Maddie didn't look at Jeff. Tears streamed down her face as she looked out the window. Would Jeff really send her home? Maddie felt her entire body stiffen. Her hands kept squeezing the edge of the seat. The car soon stopped. Maddie looked out the window. It didn't seem like they were at her mom's house yet. It had only been ten minutes. Jeff saw that Maddie didn't move after he had already gotten out of the car, so he said patiently, Are you coming? Maddie snapped out of her daze and got out of the car. She saw a plane parked nearby. Are we flying somewhere? Maddie asked. Jeff ignored her and headed straight for the plane. Maddie, who was originally following behind him, gradually came to a stop. When no one was looking, she turned around and ran for it. Hearing her steps behind him, Jeff turned around abruptly and saw Maddie running away. With a stern look in his eyes, he shouted, Capture her! The bodyguard chased after her and grabbed her wrist. Maddie immediately opened her mouth and bit down on his hand. The bodyguard loosened his grip painfully. Maddie broke free and continued to run. In front of her was a staircase leading down, but Maddie was so flustered that she didn't see it and stepped on empty air. Jeff's expression suddenly changed as he caught up with her and realized what was about to happen. His figure flashed as he grabbed Maddie's hand and pulled her back from falling. <laughs> Maddie crashed into Jeff, and the two of them fell onto the ground. Maddie's head hurt, and she felt dizzy. Ah, it hurts. Maddie covered her forehead. Maddie, what are you doing? Jeff roared. I want to run away, Maddie whispered. Jeff was furious. The veins on the back of his hands were bulging, but he couldn't touch her. Maddie only spoke the truth. She just didn't want to go back. Maddie said painfully, Since you don't want me anymore, I'll stay away from you. Wouldn't it be better if I didn't bother you? Why must you send me back? Jeff's face turned ugly. You're just going to say it like that? Maddie's face turned hot. Seeing Jeff get up, she also got up. A sharp pain came from Maddie's ankle, causing her to stumble and sit back on the ground. Jeff frowned and squatted down to check her foot. Her ankle was already red and swollen. Jeff pinched the bone with his hand, and tears welled up in Maddie's eyes. It's just a sprain, Jeff said officially. Then what should we do? Maddie asked. If the bone isn't broken, then everything should be fine, right? Jeff hesitated for a moment before he picked Maddie up. Maddie was so scared that her hands immediately clung onto Jeff's broad shoulders. Jeff carried her to the plane. After getting on, Jeff told the bodyguard, Get the first aid kit. The bodyguard went to get it. Jeff took the medicine box and started rubbing cold ointment on Maddie's ankle that made her leg tremble. 
Jeff looked at her expressionlessly. Bear with it. This will help. Jeff massaged her ankle with his hands. Maddie cried, wincing in pain. Ah! Jeff, how can I endure this? It hurts so much. Jeff was so scared by her scream that he jumped. Stop shouting. Take a deep breath. Maddie took a deep breath, in and out. But she didn't dare to scream, afraid that Jeff's concentration would break. Jeff massaged her ankle gently, and slowly his expression changed and softened. Maddie's breaths became deeper and louder. In the end, Jeff couldn't take it anymore and said, Okay, you can be done taking deep breaths. Maddie, who was about to take another deep breath, stopped in the middle of it and let the air out as quietly as she could. Jeff, you told me to take a deep breath, Maddie said carefully. Jeff's expression changed as he let go of her feet. Are you done? Maddie looked at her ankles. There was a faint yellow residue of medicinal ointment on her fair skin. Her ankle was still red and swollen, but it felt much better than before. Thank you, Maddie said. Jeff didn't say anything. Maddie felt uneasy, but she did not forget what Jeff had said at the beginning. The plane had taken off while Jeff was rubbing her ankle, and now they were flying in the sky. Maddie wondered, would she be sent home when the plane landed? Right now, she couldn't even run if she wanted to. Maddie could only beg Jeff. Jeff, can you please not send me back? As long as you don't send me back, I'm willing to do anything you want me to do. Seeing that Jeff was silent, she begged again. Jeff! Shut up! Maddie was so frightened that her body trembled. She stopped talking. Maddie turned in her chair, looking out at the sky. She was a bit scared, but she had made up her mind. If Jeff sent her back, she would think of a way to escape after Jeff left. She absolutely did not want to go back. It was too terrifying to go back. Suddenly, Maddie felt very sleepy. Due to the initial shock, she relaxed and curled up on the sofa, falling asleep. Jeff looked over at Maddie's face. Her eyelashes were very long, and her eyebrows were naturally curved. Looking past her flaws he thought she could actually be pretty cute. As Maddie gradually regained consciousness, her eyes opened. However, she realized she was in a familiar room and lying on a familiar bed, and her face instantly turned puzzled. She lifted the blanket and moved to get off the bed. Just when Maddie was about to get out of bed, Jeff appeared in the bedroom and looked at her. Don't try getting out of bed. Huh? Maddie was at a loss for a moment. Then she remembered her injured ankle, and she understood Jeff's intention. Jeff, why am I back here? Maddie asked. If you don't like it, I can send you home, Jeff said indifferently. No! Maddie hurriedly refused. Thinking of something, she asked, But didn't you dislike my living here? I can leave. I can live at school. Lots of the students live in the dorms. Say one more word and I really will send you back, Jeff threatened. Maddie's neck shrunk back. Did she say something wrong? Wasn't it better for Jeff if she were to live on campus? Bring it in, Jeff instructed servants in the hall. Maddie raised her eyes and saw the breakfast that was brought in. The servants set the small table in front of her on the bed. This kind of special treatment made Maddie a little uncomfortable. She had never been treated like this before. She looked at Jeff. Originally, she wanted to say that he didn't need to do this for her. However, Maddie swallowed her words when she saw Jeff's intense gaze. She didn't dare to speak anymore. Once Maddie started eating, Jeff turned around and left. As Maddie ate, she couldn't help but grin. Actually, Jeff wasn't that bad. Otherwise, he wouldn't have let her live here, would he? Maddie finished her breakfast and sat on the bed in a daze. After thinking for a while, she took out her cell phone and called her mother. After she dialed the number, the call was quickly connected. Mom, she started, 
but Stacy cut her off. Maddie, where are you? Stacy's anxious voice sounded. I'm with Jeff, Maddie said. Stacy heaved a sigh of relief. Ah, oh, Maddie, how many times have I told you not to trouble him? And it's almost the new year. It's not good for you to do this. Jeff said that I can live here, Maddie said. Did he say that? Stacy was surprised because she knew Jeff's temper very well. To be honest, she was still worried about Maddie being so close to Jeff. Mom, you don't have to worry about me. I will be fine here, and I will also continue studying at the university. If you miss me, or if I miss you, you can come here and see me, can't you? Maddie said. But if that's the case... Stacy wanted to say something, but her phone was snatched away by Dylan. Maddie, listen to your mother. If you live in someone else's house, won't you? Maddie's face immediately became flustered when she heard the voice. She immediately hung up the phone. Hello? Maddie? Maddie? Dylan shouted twice into the phone. When he looked at the screen, he saw that the call had ended. Dylan pushed the phone into Stacy's hand angrily. Stacy defended Maddie's choice. Don't be angry. If she wants to stay there, then she'll stay. I'll pick her up after the new year. Dylan got angry when he heard that. Didn't you say that your brother, who is not related to you by blood, isn't to be trifled with? You can't let Maddie stay there, can you? Are you really that bad of a mother? I don't like this either, but look at Maddie's reaction. I know you want to be closer to her, but this kind of thing is better done slowly. Stacy felt that Dylan was too eager to force a relationship with Maddie. However, finding a man who was interested in her daughter was extremely valuable. Stacy felt more or less grateful in her heart. I know how to take things slow, but what will people think of us if Maddie is living with someone else? Dylan argued. Then what should we do? Stacy asked. Dylan paced back and forth. When he stopped, he thought of a solution. The two of us will personally bring her back. Stacy always listened to her husband, so she immediately agreed with Dylan's plan. Stacy thought that if the two of them went to pick her up, Maddie would be touched and return home. So the two of them drove over there. It was almost noon when they arrived. Jeff was on the phone in the living room, conducting business. Just as he was about to leave, a servant came over. Mr. Holmes, Miss Smith's parents have come to bring her home. Jeff's black eyes narrowed as he looked at the servant. The sharp gaze made the servant lower his head. Let them in? Yes, sir. After a moment, Dylan and Stacy walked in. Jeff's gaze fell on the middle-aged man beside Stacy. Dylan had never met a man with such sharp eyes. Jeff, I'm sorry to have caused you trouble. I didn't know that Maddie would come back. My husband and I are here to bring her home, Stacy said, gesturing to the man. This is Dylan, my current husband. Jeff retracted his gaze. Take a seat. Dylan and Stacy sat down on the sofa. Stacy hadn't thought that Jeff's residence would be even more imposing than his father's. The room was especially large. The servant poured them tea. With a smile on his face, Dylan said, I've really troubled you, and it's almost the new year. I'm really sorry we have to deal with all of this. Jeff did not have any expression on his face. He simply listened. Do you think she will go back with you? Jeff asked lightly. This... Dylan was stunned. He didn't know what to say. Stacy's face was also very awkward. Stacy and I will properly advise her. As long as she comes home, we'll make sure she's taken care of, Dylan said. Actually, it was impressive for her stepfather to do this. The average stepfather would have paid no attention to his stepchildren. But not only did Dylan care, he really cared. Maddie was upstairs lying on the sofa, unable to walk with injuries to her ankle. While she was lazily playing with her cell phone, the door was pushed open. The first person to walk in was a servant. The next was Jeff.
Maddie smiled when she saw Jeff, but the grin froze on her face when she saw the two people behind him. Jeff looked at the changes on Maddie's face. His black eyes were deep, and he didn't say anything. Maddie, why did you come here again? It's not good. Your mom and I came over to take you home. Dylan was very excited to see Maddie. Maddie held the phone tightly in her hand. Her knuckles had turned white. She didn't even look at Jeff's expression. Was he sending her back again? Maddie didn't say a word. She lowered her head and looked at the ground. Maddie, why aren't you saying anything? Will you go back with your mother? Stacy didn't know how to persuade her. Why was this child so stubborn? If Jeff came from a blood relation, then it would be fine. But that was not the case. Stacy walked up and looked at Maddie anxiously. Guilt flashed through Maddie's eyes, but she remained silent. That's right, Maddie. Since your mother and I came all the way here to pick you up, why don't you come back with us? Dylan also approached Maddie. However, as soon as he got close, Maddie reacted and stood up, trying to get away with a flustered expression on her face. However, she forgot about her ankle injury and fell to the ground. Jeff, who saw all of this, went forward and hugged Maddie, letting her fall onto his chest. Only then did Stacy and Dylan notice Maddie's injured ankle. Maddie, what happened to your foot? Dylan was more anxious than Stacy about her injury. It scared Maddie so much that she hugged Jeff and clung to him. Don't worry about it. Get lost. In times of danger, she still sought Jeff's protection, even if he was sending her back again. With a cold expression, Jeff looked at them with hostility and said, Since you came all the way here, you should stay here for a couple of days. I insist. Maddie looked up at Jeff in disbelief. The line of his jaw was so hard and cold. She didn't know why Jeff wanted them to stay here. Wouldn't he want her to leave with them? What exactly was Jeff thinking? How can we accept that offer? We're here to bring Maddie back, Dylan said, trying to remain polite. However, Jeff acted as if he didn't hear anything. He instructed the servant, Go and arrange for a room. Please follow me, the servant said. Dylan and Stacy helplessly followed the servant. After they left, Maddie's nerves finally relaxed. Realizing that she had been holding Jeff, she immediately let go and sat back on the sofa. Maddie lowered her head and did not say a word. Jeff could only see her hair. What, you're not happy that I invited them to stay? Maddie raised her head, tears welling up in her eyes. They shouldn't stay here. Jeff's eyes twitched slightly. Jeff, didn't you say that you wanted me to stay here? Why did you do this again? I told you I would live on campus, and you insisted that I live here. But then you told them to come pick me up. What do you mean by that? Maddie asked excitedly as her tears fell. Jeff wiped them away with the back of his hand. Did I say I wanted you to leave? Jeff asked coldly. Maddie was stunned. Didn't you want to send me away? Then why did they come? And they said they were going to take me back. Did I agree? Jeff asked. Maddie was stunned. She hadn't heard Jeff say that he was going to send her back. She had just assumed. But there's no need to let them stay here. Maddie still had a lot of thoughts about what was happening. It's my freedom to stay in my house. After Jeff said that, he glanced at her, turned around and left the room. Maddie looked after him in a daze. Jeff was right. This was his place. But no one should have to live with someone they don't like. Two days. Maddie didn't want to stay under the same roof as them even for a second. Maddie looked at her feet. Luckily, she was wounded and couldn't walk around, so she didn't have to worry about running into them, right? Could she ask Jeff to stop them from coming to her room? But when she thought about Jeff's expression just now, she felt that he wouldn't help her. Maddie ate in her room during meals, but before going to bed, Stacy came to Maddie's room. 
When Maddie saw that Stacy was the only one who came in, her tense body immediately relaxed. Maddie, is this your room? No wonder you want to stay here. Just this room is bigger than our home, Stacy said with envy. What do you want? Maddie was afraid that Dylan would be close behind Stacy. Although this house is big, we don't dare to walk around. Your father is in his room, so I came to see you. Don't you want to see your mother? Stacy asked reproachfully. When Maddie heard the word father, her expression turned bad. My father is long dead. That man is not my father. How disgusting. Okay, okay, okay. Stepdad. Stacy thought that her daughter was just being rebellious, so she didn't say much and just let her be. However, what she didn't know was that Maddie was unwilling to even call Dylan her stepdad. She didn't even want to look at him. Thinking about Dylan made Maddie feel sick to her stomach. Maddie, are you really not willing to come back? People will talk. Jeff is not our relative. It's scandalous, Stacy urged. If he's not family, then why did you tell me that in the past? And I won't live here forever. I just need to wait a bit longer and save money. Then I'll move out myself. I can work and support myself, so I won't be troubling Jeff for too long. Maddie... Stacy still wanted to advise her, but Maddie cut her off. Stop talking. I don't want to hear it. Stacy sighed. Fine, I won't say any more. Tell me, what happened to your foot? Twisted ankle? Yes, it's a sprain. Jeff said that I'll be fine after a couple of days of rest. You don't have to worry about me. Maddie sighed. Stacy looked at her daughter, thinking that she was somehow both sensible and insane. After staying in the room for a while, she left. In Maddie's heart, she felt bad for treating her mother this way. But was there anything else she could do? Not at all. After a day, other than the servant and Jeff, no one else showed up in Maddie's room. But even so, it did not mean that she could rest peacefully. She knew that Dylan and Stacy would be there for another day. What did Jeff say? Can we take Maddie back tomorrow? Dylan asked Stacy anxiously while they were alone in the room. I don't know. Stacy sighed. Well, go on and ask. You can't possibly let Maddie stay here. This is someone else's house. It's not good to stay here forever, Dylan argued. Hearing Dylan's words, Stacy, who originally wanted Maddie to live here, was persuaded. She gave in. Fine, I'll go ask. When Stacy walked out of the room, she saw Jeff standing in the hall, buttoning the sleeves of his shirt. Jeff, are you going out? Stacy asked carefully. Yes. What's the matter? Jeff looked at her. I just want to ask, when we leave tomorrow, can we make Maddie come with us? Stacy stammered. Is that something I can decide? Maddie can make her own decisions. If she wants to return, she will do so. If she doesn't, she will stay here. There are a lot of rooms here anyways, so it doesn't matter to me. I won't be back tonight. Tell Maddie about my decision. All right, Stacy said. Jeff looked up and saw Dylan standing not far away. After sweeping a cold glance over him, he turned around and left. Dylan walked up to Stacy and asked, what does he mean by that? If Maddie is willing to go back, she will. I don't think that Maddie is willing to do anything about it, though. Stacy sighed. Dylan's expression changed, becoming evil. Maddie ate dinner and rested against the headboard, her cell phone in her hand. All she did these days was play games. At that moment, the door opened and someone walked in. Maddie looked up and saw Stacy and Dylan. Maddie nervously sat up and angrily said to Dylan, Who let you in? Get out! Maddie, how can you say that? Don't treat your stepdad that way. Stacy felt that Maddie had overreacted. It's fine if you're here, but why did you let him come to my room? Maddie hated Dylan. 
Maddie, don't be angry. Your mother and I came to persuade you to come back, because tomorrow we are leaving. Dylan wasn't angry. He was smiling. Stacy continued, Look at how nice your stepdad is to you. He's afraid that you'll be lonely. Don't act like a child. I said I won't go back. Maddie was enraged. Seeing that, Dylan pulled Stacy out of the room. What did you do that for? Stacy asked. Go to the supermarket and buy something that Maddie likes to eat. If you try to coax her, perhaps she might be willing to go back, Dylan said. And you'll stay here to look after her? Stacy asked. What do I need to protect her from? Since this place is so safe, nothing will happen to her. True. With that, Stacy left. Dylan returned to his room once again. After waiting a moment, he cracked the door open, and seeing that there were only servants there, he slipped into Maddie's room. Maddie was just wondering if they had left when she saw Dylan walking in. Maddie's whole body was filled with fear. Where's my mother? She asked with a shaking breath. You made a fuss and didn't want to go back, so your mom went to buy things for you, Dylan said with a smile on his face. Get out! Maddie gave the order intensely. Dylan remained unmoved and even sat down on the edge of the bed with a smile. Maddie was so frightened that she retreated backwards. Who let you sit on my bed? Get lost, she said. Maddie, why are you so upset? I'm here to take you home. The smile on Dylan's face became weird and twisted. I won't go home with you guys. Just give up, Maddie yelled. Maddie, do you think I can't find you just because you're hiding here? I advise you to come back with me, honestly. It sounded like a threat, but he still had a strange smile on his face. Look at you. I really feel sorry for you. I can buy you whatever you want. Why are you so disobedient? Dylan said as he performed a fake frown. Tears welled from the corners of Maddie's eyes. Suddenly, a voice that sounded like it came from hell came from behind Dylan. Dylan was stunned. Before he could come back to his senses, he was yanked backward by the back of his head. Ah! Dylan fell to the ground. Jeff's foot directly stepped on his neck. Maddie was curled up in the bed, her eyes misty with tears. She was frightened. Get under the blanket and cover your head. Jeff looked at her and ordered. Maddie didn't know what to do. At this moment, she looked at Jeff as if he was her lifesaver and did whatever he told her to do. She crawled into the blanket and covered her head. Spare me, I didn't do anything, Dylan begged. He had not expected Jeff to come back. Didn't you say that you were going out tonight? Jeff didn't say anything and lightened the pressure on Dylan's neck. Just as Dylan was about to heave a sigh of relief, he felt a cold shiver down his spine. The corner of Jeff's mouth curled up into a cruel smile. He grabbed Dylan's neck and forcefully pulled him backwards. Dylan's eyes were wide open, but it was obvious that Dylan was dead. Jeff casually waved his hand, and a bodyguard walked in and took Dylan's body out. There was no trace of blood on the carpet. Jeff walked to the edge of the bed and sat down. Maddie trembled in fear, but she still had her head buried under the blanket, so she thought it was Dylan coming closer to her. Maddie's body kept shaking under the blanket. He's gone, Jeff said. Maddie hesitated for a moment before she pulled the blanket aside, revealing her eyes. She looked around but didn't see Dylan. He... where is he? Maddie asked, trembling. Let's go, Jeff said without answering her question. Do I have to go back home? Maddie asked again. Jeff didn't answer her, but he asked, You've been unwilling to go back because of Dylan? Maddie's expression changed immediately. She lowered her gaze and didn't say anything. When I ask you a question, you have to answer it. Maddie glanced at Jeff timidly before she nodded. 
He would come to my room while I was sleeping. Thinking about that scene, Jeff's face immediately turned dark. Letting him die so easily was letting him off too easily. He should have died in pain. Does your mom know? Jeff asked. If Stacy knew about this, he would have made her pay as well. Maddie shook her head. I don't know. Why didn't you tell your mother? Jeff's expression turned ugly. Did she even know how to protect herself? How long had that man been bullying Maddie? I was afraid my mother would be upset, so I didn't say anything. But I know how to protect myself. Your protection was running away? Jeff asked. Maddie pursed her lips and didn't speak. She had no other choice. He will never appear in front of you again. Jeff looked at her frightened expression and suppressed his sinister tone. Do you mean that I can stay here forever? Maddie asked hopefully. Jeff looked at her clear eyes and said, You don't need to go back. Just stay here. Thank you, Jeff. Maddie's face lit up in delight. Jeff's gaze shifted as he took out her injured ankle to examine it. Maddie looked at Jeff's expression and felt that it was a little scary. She said, It's fine now. It doesn't hurt if I don't touch it. Did he touch it? Jeff asked. Yes. Maddie nodded. Jeff stood up without a word and walked out with a gloomy face. Maddie was stunned. Was Jeff angry again? Even so, she was so grateful that Jeff had chased Dylan away. Otherwise, who knows what Dylan would have done. Of course, Maddie didn't know that Dylan had been killed by Jeff. She thought he had just left. Fortunately, Jeff said that she could live here from now on, so she didn't have to go back. Jeff went downstairs. Just as he walked down the stairs, he saw Stacy returning. She was carrying a big bag of snacks, which she wanted to give to Maddie. Jeff's expression was calm as he said, Your husband went back home. Stacy was taken aback. He, he's gone? Yes. And Maddie? From now on, I will watch Maddie until she graduates, Jeff said decidedly. He looked at Stacy with disgust, thinking that she wasn't able to protect her own daughter properly. If it wasn't for the fact that Jeff saw that Stacy truly cared for Maddie, he wouldn't even look at her directly. Wouldn't that be too much trouble for you? Stacy asked. You were basically a member of the Holmes family. As for Maddie, she's my family. There's no trouble with her staying here, Jeff said carelessly. I, how could I still be a member of the Holmes family? Hearing you say that, I can only feel ashamed. I'm sorry. Stacy felt herself lose her composure and immediately recovered. Since she insisted on staying here, I won't take her back. And since Dylan is gone, I won't stay here anymore. I'll give these snacks to Maddie and let her know. Stacy entered Maddie's room and put down the food on the coffee table. She sat down on the edge of the bed and caressed Maddie's small hand. She asked, Are you sure you want to stay here? I'm sure. Maddie nodded. Sometimes, I think. I have done something wrong when it comes to raising you. If so, I want to correct myself, Stacy whimpered. No, you didn't do anything wrong. It's my problem. Even now, Maddie still did not say what Dylan did to her. Mom, is Dylan really being nice to you? In the beginning, he was in a big rush and pushed me to get married. But in the end, he was kind. Since we've settled down, I guess I haven't thought much about it. And then I saw you grow up, and now I'm waiting for you to get married and have kids. And I don't have any regrets, Stacy said with a smile. Mom, do you want to return to the Holmes family? If you want to come back, I can help you. Maddie thought that if she could only get her mother into a stable home, she wouldn't need to cling to Dylan. Stacy's expression immediately changed. Please don't have such thoughts. Why? Maddie asked, puzzled. I couldn't bear to see them again after what I did. Just stay here with Jeff and don't bother the Holmes family. 
Do you understand? Seeing Stacy's serious expression, Maddie did not say anything else and nodded in agreement. But in her heart, she knew that she must not let her mother live with that disgusting man for the rest of her life. After Stacy left, Maddie felt a little bit sad, but she was also relieved that she could stay with Jeff and rest in peace. It was good for everyone, she thought. Maddie, who was still in a daze, heard someone walk into the room. She turned and looked at Jeff, who was standing beside the bed. Jeff sat on the edge of the bed and pulled out Maddie's foot. He then wiped a towel with ointment on Maddie's ankle. Maddie's nose twitched as she smelled the disinfectant. Maddie wanted to sneeze from the strong smell of the disinfectant, but she held it in. After all, Jeff was doing this out of kindness, so she couldn't show any signs of disrespect. Jeff didn't express anything on his face, but his eyes were dark. Jeff, have you finished? Maddie couldn't help but speak up after he started wiping yet again with a clean cloth. Jeff raised his eyes and looked at Maddie. He could see a few tears were already seeping out of her eyes. Jeff released his hand, and Maddie heaved a sigh of relief. However, Jeff still had to apply the ointment on her after using the disinfectant. Ah, it hurts, Maddie whimpered. She felt as if she had experienced a world of ice and then of fire. One moment it was itchy, the next it was painful. Jeff, be gentler, she begged in her soft, timid voice. Jeff felt his heart tighten. Okay, I will. He lightened his touch for a moment, but then returned to rubbing with more strength. Maddie flinched away. She didn't want to offend Jeff, but she couldn't stand the pain. Jeff sighed with impatience. Didn't you hear the doctor say that you need to use strength every time you rub out your ankle to get the blood flowing? Maddie naturally had heard the doctor say that, but this pain felt too much. Seeing Jeff's determined gaze, Maddie could only endure it. Maddie grit her teeth and took a deep breath. After he put Maddie's foot back under the blanket, Maddie said, Jeff, I can apply the medicine myself in the future. But you won't rub out your ankle, will you? Jeff challenged. Just as she was about to nod her head, Jeff's voice immediately sunk down. Is it of any use? Maddie stopped talking and looked at Jeff's expression timidly. Then Jeff turned around and left. Maddie pouted. She felt that Jeff's temper was really hard to guess and deal with. Just as dinner was about to begin, the cell phone beside Maddie rang. She took the phone and looked at the caller ID. She answered, Mom, what's up? I'm already home, but Dylan isn't back yet. He didn't even answer my phone call. Do you know where he is? Stacy asked. Maddie did not want to talk about Dylan, especially now. However, since Stacy was so nervous, she tried to comfort her mother. Did he go somewhere else first? I wouldn't worry too much. He won't go far, Maddie said indifferently. Well, I'll wait. Sometimes I really can't stand that guy. It's okay. You should rest properly. Don't get out of bed if you have nothing to do, okay? Her mom advised. Got it. Also, try not to cause trouble for Jeff. I know. Jeff said he would let you stay until you graduated. If you don't want to come back and he kicks you out, you can live on campus. If you don't want to live there, you can rent a room. I can even help you pay for it. Hearing Stacy's words, a smile appeared on Maddie's face. All right. After hanging up the phone, Maddie was in a bit of a daze. Perhaps the Holmes family didn't like her mother, but in her heart, her mother was the most important person in the world. That was why she chose to remain silent, even though she had suffered so much pain from Dylan. Maddie just wanted her mother to have a better life, full of happiness. But where did Dylan go? After dinner, Stacy called again and said that Dylan still hadn't come back. Maddie didn't care if Dylan returned home or not but she was concerned about her mother's anxiety when she was alone at home. 
a servant came into her room and asked, Miss, do you need anything else? No need. Is Jeff home? She replied. Yes, Mr. Holmes is here. Then can you ask him to come here? I have something to talk to him about. Yes, ma'am. Not long after the servant left, Jeff arrived. His face was cold. He didn't like feeling as if he had been summoned. What is it? He asked briskly. Jeff, you said that Dylan went back home alone, but my mom called to say that he hasn't come home yet. Are you that worried? Jeff sneered. Of course not. I'm worried about my mother. Maddie didn't know what Jeff was so unhappy about. What are you worried about? If he's not at home, perhaps he was killed on the way, Jeff said casually. Maddie choked on Jeff's brutal words. Jeff went up and took Maddie's phone, turned around and left the room. Go to sleep. Maddie wanted to complain about Jeff taking her phone, but he was gone before she could form the words. In the morning, after Maddie finished her breakfast, her hand was about to reach for her phone when she remembered that it wasn't there. She leaned back in the bed in boredom. There wasn't even a television in the bedroom. Jeff walked in and saw that Maddie looked very bored. He handed her phone over expressionlessly. Thank you, Maddie said as she held the phone in her hand. Dylan is dead, Jeff suddenly said. Maddie was stunned. She raised her head to look at Jeff and asked in confusion, What? He was killed on the way home. The body has been found, Jeff said. Maddie was in a daze for a long time, unable to react. He really died? Jeff, tell me the truth. Was he really killed? Maddie was momentarily unable to digest it. Isn't it better that he's dead? Jeff asked. Maddie took a shuddering breath. But my mom, does my mom know? Jeff nodded. I talked to her and told her to move in after things over there were settled. Jeff knew that Stacy would be upset, but he couldn't let that kind of man live a moment longer. Move over here? But my mom, where would she stay? Maddie asked. I'll arrange it for her. You don't have to worry about it. Jeff's expression was calm. This, is that too much trouble for you? When Jeff heard that, he momentarily lost his patience. You know what's troublesome. You should have stayed away from me from the beginning. Maddie shrunk back into the bed. Jeff turned around and left with a dark face. Maddie felt slightly guilty. However, thinking about how Dylan died, she felt like she was in a dream. She asked herself, is Dylan, who did such disgusting things to me, really dead? Then doesn't that mean I don't have to be afraid in the future? But what about my mother? Across town, still in her father's house, Lucia sat by the window of her room on the second floor. She rested her chin on the windowsill and breathed in the fresh air outside. She didn't go to work. She felt that she couldn't do anything anymore. Her gaze landed on the pink diamond on her ring finger. Her heart was sour and heavy, even causing her breathing to be somewhat stifled. How had she and Dalen become like this? The pink diamond was still dazzling. Looking at it made her heart feel even worse. The more Lucia looked, the more she couldn't take it anymore. She reached out to pull it off her finger. But no matter how hard she pulled, the ring didn't budge. What was going on? She wouldn't have to wear it for the rest of her life, would she? Dalen was so heartless to her. Why should she wear it? It felt like a mockery. Just as she was thinking of a way to rip the pink diamond ring off, the phone on her bedside table rang. Lucia stood up and went to answer it. Who is it? She asked. Can you please fix your phone so you know it's me? Cole's dissatisfied voice sounded. I would need money to buy myself a new phone, Lucia complained. Continue being stingy. Cole changed his tone. Oh, right. My parents were talking about you, asking when you're coming to visit at our house. I'll go see them in the new year. Lucia, are you still at your dad's house? Dalen, didn't he come to find you? 
Cole didn't want to make Lucia sad. However, dragging things on like this wasn't an option either. It was very hard to bear. Why would he be looking for me? Don't you remember he has Victoria now? Lucia asked sarcastically, while suppressing the bitterness in her heart. How about this? Since you're alone now, why don't you come to my house for the new year? Cole offered. Lucia couldn't celebrate the new year alone. That was too heartbreaking. No need. I just want to stay here. Lucia refused. Cole wanted to argue, but he also didn't want to agitate her more. After the call ended, Lucia looked at the diamond ring on her ring finger again and stood up to leave. Lucia wandered to the street where she had gone to sell the diamond ring months ago when she first ran away. She wanted to find the shop that cheated her, but she couldn't find it. She looked around and saw an old man who was cleaning people's shoes on the street. He looked a little familiar. Lucia leaned in and looked at the haggard old man. Are you and the owner of the pawn shop twins? You two look alike. The old man who was cleaning the shoes looked at her with wide, unbelieving eyes. It's you? Lucia found this strange. You know me? Of course. The fallen pawnbroker could never forget that priceless pink diamond. He looked at Lucia's finger. The diamond ring was still there. Lucia understood. You are the owner of the pawn shop? Why are you out cleaning shoes? Lucia asked, surprised. What else could I do? I offended your husband and I couldn't operate my shop any longer. If I didn't clean shoes, I wouldn't even be able to eat, said the depraved pawnbroker. Lucia wasn't too surprised as she heard the pawnbroker's tale. She squatted down and held out her ring. When I first came to you, you said this was worthless. You were scamming me. Now do you know how much it's worth? The fallen pawnbroker looked at her with a guilty conscience and stammered, I, uh, you're not the only one I tricked. Lucia shook her head in disgust and said, You deserve to shine shoes. The pawnbroker looked down in shame. Lucia continued, Then do you feel that there's anything strange about my ring? Can you not take off the ring and give me a closer look? I know it's very valuable. Even if you were here, I wouldn't have that much money. The decadent pawn shop owner felt as if his heart had been pierced. The corner of Lucia's mouth twitched. She knew she couldn't take it off. I can't take off my ring. If you help me take it off, I'll give you $50,000, Lucia said, ignoring his attitude. The fallen pawn shop owner glared at her. Are you playing with me? What I'm saying is true. I really can't take it off. Lucia pulled and pulled at the ring, but it was impossible for her to take it off. Look, you try. Really? $50,000? What if I take it off for you and you go back on your word? The pawnbroker was suspicious, but now that he was broke, $50,000 was an astronomical figure. Lucia rolled her eyes. <laughs> if I don't give it to you, would you still take it off? No. The fallen pawnbroker shook his head. Then take it off. I'll give you the money. The depraved pawn shop owner could only look at the ring. As he looked at it, his attention was distracted by the pink diamond. There was a lustful and greedy expression in his eyes. Lucia saw that something was amiss and was angered. What are you looking at? Do you think that I'm not good for the money? The depraved pawnbroker retracted his greedy eyes and said, I'm drawn to jewels. You can't blame me. With that, he began to look at the ring seriously. This ring of yours seems to have something stuck in it, he said. What is it? That's right. If you try to pull it off, it will tighten, like a finger trap. You'll have to use special tools to get it off, said the fallen pawnbroker. What tools? Do you have any here? Lucia asked desperately. I'm a shoeshine man. What kind of tools would I have? The tools are at my house. Then I'll go back with you to get the tools. Just get it off for me. The depraved pawnbroker wouldn't have paid any attention to her if it weren't for the $50,000 she was promising him. 
Since his home wasn't far from where they were, he stood up, packed up his stall, and took Lucia back with him. When they reached his home, the depraved pawnbroker found the tools, and Lucia gave him her hand. While he was working, he said, You're quite bold. Aren't you afraid that I'll harm you and steal the ring back? You can't harm me. If you do, the same people who took your business will take your life, Lucia said casually. The fallen pawnbroker was so scared that his hands trembled. He just wanted to scare her. What was he really doing? If I help you take the ring off, can you let me reopen the pawn shop? The man asked. No. Why? Who let you cheat so many people? Serves you right, Lucia said, looking down on him. The depraved pawnbroker really didn't want to help her get it off. But in the end, he gave in to a $50,000 reward. With the help of the small tools, the ring slowly slid off of Lucia's finger. After finally getting it off, Lucia's entire body went into a trance. It was as if a sense of loss had filled her chest. I was so used to it being there, she thought. It had basically become part of her finger. What a high-tech thing. If you put it back on, you won't be able to take it off yourself for the rest of your life. The pawnbroker turned the ring over in his hands, unwilling to give it to Lucia. Upon seeing this, Lucia immediately rushed over. He clenched his fist around the ring and said, You can only look at things that don't belong to you. You can't take them. Lucia handed over the money, and the pawnbroker handed over the ring. Lucia did not want to be alone in her father's house that night. Her heart would only become more and more forlorn. She knew that she should go out and celebrate the new year. She could go to Cole's house, but wouldn't it be a pity for a married person to go to someone else's house for the new year's celebration? After thinking it over, she decided to travel out of town for the new year. At the very least, she wouldn't feel so bad about being alone, right? After returning home, Lucia took out the ring and looked at it for a long time. She had known how precious this ring was, but she didn't expect Dalen to use such a method to prevent her from taking it off. However, at this moment was Dalen, who was with Victoria, still thinking about what he had done? He'd probably forgotten about the whole thing. Lucia put the ring in the drawer and closed it. Then she packed her luggage. She wondered where she would go, but ultimately decided that it didn't really matter. She hadn't been out on a trip in her whole life, so she was going out to see the world. Lucia went downstairs to the dining room to eat. When she was done eating, Lucia stood up and was about to leave the dining room when she said to the servant, I want some milk. Why don't you go buy it for me later? All right, ma'am. Lucia nodded. She knew this servant was hired by and reported to Dalen. If the servant suspected anything amiss, Dalen would definitely know. Asking a servant to buy things was a very normal thing, so there was nothing to be suspicious about. After the servant had left, Lucia anxiously looked at her father's black and white photo. Dad, if you were here, would you still be arguing with me? Lucia laughed, her eyes burning with tears. I'll be back after the new year. I'll come see you then. Lucia stood in front of her father's photo for almost half an hour before she went upstairs to bring down her luggage and leave the villa. Seated in the taxi, Lucia was reading the tour guide she had created. She even looked at the map. However, in her eyes, the map seemed to have no rules and she could not understand it at all. It took her a long time to figure out what was going on. The taxi followed the route she had provided and dropped her off at the bus stop. Her first stop was to go to a tourist place with mountains and rivers. The photos online looked amazing. She wanted to book a hotel close to the scenery where she could open the window to see the clear river. Lucia was looking forward to it. There were also quite a few people on the bus and there were many different stops. Lucia sat by the window and thought that she should call Cole. As soon as he picked up, Cole asked, What's wrong? Let me tell you something, Lucia said. What is it? Good or bad? Cole asked nervously. Good news. Cole heaved a sigh of relief and asked excitedly, 
you and Dalen. It's settled. What are you talking about? Lucia looked at the scenery outside the window. She didn't want to think about Dalen, that heartless man at this moment. Then what's good? I'm out on a trip. What? When are we going? I'm on my way now. Cole was so shocked that he almost fell from his bed. Why are you out on a trip? You're alone? Yeah, I'm going on a trip to celebrate the new year. Lucia, you... Cole felt immediate anxiety. Lucia, however, did not care. What? Isn't this good? I want to go out and see the world. And there are a lot of people traveling these days to celebrate the new year. Cole wanted to say other people who travel during the new year are with their whole family, and you are alone. Instead, he asked, Why didn't you tell me? Why should I tell you? Lucia challenged. The two of us could have gone together. Forget it. I want some space to clear my head. Lucia had waited to tell Cole until she was on the bus because she assumed he would want to come. She knew how Cole would react badly, but she had already decided. Lucia understood that Cole did not want her to feel sad alone. However, Lucia felt that this was what she needed to do. After driving for a while, the bus slowly ground to a halt, as if it had been stuck in the mud. Why did you stop? Lucia asked. The passengers chattered away. The driver replied, I'll go down and take a look. Then he went down. After a while, he got back on and said, The bus is broken. Everyone off. What? Then what should we do? A passenger asked. Yeah, where are we going to get a ride in the middle of nowhere? I'll call another bus to take you. As the driver said this, he took out his cell phone and made a call. Lucia sat in her seat, looking gloomily around the noisy interior of the bus. How unlucky was she? The first time she goes on a trip, she breaks down halfway? If she had known, she would have gone on the train. After the driver finished his call, he said, The bus won't be able to get here. You guys will have to wait until my bus is repaired before we continue our journey. When will the bus be ready? A passenger asked. I don't know. The driver sighed. This is really bad luck. If your bus has any problems, then you shouldn't have driven it. What do you mean by leaving us on the road? The passengers were not happy. The driver was also troubled. How was I to know? I'm trapped here too. It's no use arguing with me. You are shirking your responsibilities. Exactly. How come there's no bus to take us the rest of the way? It's obvious because he wants to get rid of us as he pleases. Listening to the noise of the passengers, the driver argued, The buses are all busy. If you don't want to wait, there's a hotel not too far away. You can stay here for the night. Of course, there will be another bus passing by tomorrow. Lucia couldn't bear to stay in the noisy bus any longer. So without saying anything, she got out of the bus. When she stepped outside, she looked at the fields on both sides of the road and felt a little dazed. Lucia gritted her teeth. Lucia dragged her suitcase and walked forward alone. After walking for half an hour without seeing the hotel, Lucia wished she could go back and scold the bus driver thoroughly. What did he mean, not far away? She'd been walking for forever. It took Lucia almost an hour of walking before she found a hotel by the roadside the highway hotel. Lucia stood outside the door and looked at the relatively clean yard, thinking about all the horror movies she had seen. She was nervous, but she also really couldn't walk anymore. Furthermore, it was too cold for her to sleep outside. So Lucia shook off her nerves and forced herself to enter the highway hotel. When she opened the door, the sound of wind chimes rang out. It actually gave her a feeling of calmness. The man at the front desk was wearing glasses and looked very friendly. Hello, are you looking for a room? Yeah, please, Lucia replied. What kind of amenities are you looking for? We have different sizes of beds and some rooms have bathtubs as well as showers, the front desk man asked. Well, sorry, I don't have much money. I'll take whatever you have that I can afford, Lucia said. 
Lucia had wanted to say that she wanted the best room, but after thinking about it, she figured it was best not to reveal her wealth, lest they try to rob her later. Lucia was witty enough by herself. All right. The man at the reception desk started typing on his computer to get a room for her. After entering the room, she thought it looked pretty clean, but there was no heater, no showers. She didn't know what era the TV was from, but all that displayed was static. After circling the room, Lucia put the suitcase aside and thought, It's fine. I'll stay the night and leave tomorrow. At this moment, her phone rang. Lucia took it out and answered, Hello? Where are you? Dalen's anger was almost tangible through the phone. Lucia was stunned. She hadn't expected it to be Dalen. Actually, there was no need to be surprised. If she could have seen the caller ID on the screen, she would never have answered his call. I'm traveling, Lucia answered. Who let you travel alone? Dalen almost growled. Why can't I travel? I was bored at home. Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to run away forever. I'll be back after I've seen enough. When will that be? Dalen asked. Sometime after the new year? Come back now. Lucia was annoyed when she heard that overbearing voice. Why should I come back now? Don't I have the freedom to make my own choices? It's better for you to mind your own business and not waste your time on me. With that, Lucia hung up the phone and turned it off. It was really strange. Was he unsatisfied with Victoria? Dalen dialed Lucia's number again, but her phone was already turned off. He was so angry that he slammed his fist on the car door. The driver sitting in the front did not dare to breathe. The only person that could make Dalen so angry was Lucia. The car stopped at Lucia's father's house. Dalen got out of the car with a cold expression. He stared down the shivering servant and said with a ruthless gaze, You didn't know that she went out? What did you think you were supposed to be doing here? I'm sorry, sir. Lucia said she wanted milk and told me to go buy some, so I went. When I returned, she was gone. Dalen suppressed the anger in his heart. Lucia was obviously trying to leave secretly. Dalen turned around and went to Lucia's room on the second floor. He opened the door. The interior was neat and tidy. The bed was still broken. The air in the room seemed to still carry the scent of Lucia's body. And yet, it was so cold. Her suitcase was gone and her clothes were gone. Dalen opened a drawer and his eyes narrowed. The pink diamond ring was lying there quietly. Dalen lifted it up. The expression on his face was so ugly that it could no longer be described. She actually took it off again. What was she thinking? Did she actually want to leave him? Dalen went down the stairs and walked up to Spencer. Find her. Just these two words were so full of pain and malice. Once he found her, he would lock her in the mansion and never think of letting her out again. Lucia suffered so much during her night in the hotel. Once the sun went down, it became extremely cold. She had huddled in her bed for a long time, but her feet were still cold. Lucia could not bear it any longer. She lifted the blanket and got off the bed, determined to ask the owner for a hot water bottle. How else could she sleep tonight? However, just as she was about to turn the corner and walk to the front desk, she saw someone walk in. Upon seeing that person, Lucia immediately crouched down and hid. Why was Spencer here? Was Dalen nearby? If Spencer was here, Dalen wouldn't be far. Without hesitation, Lucia turned around and ran back to her room. Why did it have to be like this? Why couldn't Dalen just let her breathe? Lucia went back to her room, picked up her things, and threw them out the window. Then she jumped out of the window and ran away. Fortunately, she was on the first floor. Otherwise, she definitely wouldn't be able to escape. Spencer was talking to the owner at the front desk. Excuse me, is this person staying here? Spencer showed the photo in his hand to the owner. The front desk man nodded. Yes, she came in earlier today. 
Spencer's expression relaxed. Is she still in the room? Yes, she hasn't been outside since the room was open. Take me there, Spencer demanded. When he reached the door, Spencer knocked. No one answered. Maybe she was asleep. Therefore, Spencer knocked on the door with a little more strength and continued to knock patiently. However, there was still no response. Spencer frowned, then raised his leg and kicked the door open. There was no one inside, and the window was open. She had run away. Lucia ran for as long as her legs would carry her. She dragged her suitcase down the mountain road and miraculously saw a bus coming, so she rushed forward to intercept it. As soon as the bus stopped, she climbed in. When she saw the driver, she was a little stunned. Hey, I told you to be patient, and now you've ended up sharing a bus with us after all. One of the passengers laughed at her. Lucia did not expect that all the same people would be on this bus, but she was grateful that she had found a way to get as far away from Dalen as possible. Dalen stood on the mountain road, his figure cutting through the night. As he watched a bus pass by on the road, his eyes were turned to the dark beyond, searching. Mr. Patrick, it looks like Lucia has run away. Spencer ran out and said, There is a bus up ahead. She must be on it. Dalen turned around and got into the car. Dalen's car easily chased down the bus, and he came on to look for Lucia. However, all of them were unfamiliar faces. Lucia was nowhere to be seen. The people in the bus were frightened by the strangely intense man and didn't dare to breathe. Dalen's face was terrifyingly dark as he turned around and got out of the bus. Only then did the bus dare to leave. Dalen looked into the dark night. If it wasn't for the light from the headlights on the car, everything would have been swallowed up by darkness. He was not only angry, but also worried. Lucia must have fled because of him. Since she was on foot and didn't get into the bus, she must be somewhere nearby. Other than this road hotel, there were no other places to sleep nearby. Little did Dalen know, Lucia had gotten on the bus, but at the last second, she felt she couldn't stay. With Dalen's intellect, he would definitely stop the bus and check for her. So she turned and got out of the bus. Then she went up the hill again. For someone who liked watching horror movies, she was deathly afraid of the dark, especially in this kind of countryside. Lucia had no problem climbing back in through the window into the highway hotel. She didn't open the door to her room nor did she disturb the people in the hotel. Even though it was not warm, at least it was better than being outside, right? Outside, she would freeze to death. Dalen kept trying to call Lucia, but she wasn't answering. He returned to the highway hotel, and when the front desk man saw this extraordinarily imposing man standing there with a menacing attitude, he didn't dare to say anything. At that moment, the phone in Dalen's hand rang. Dalen picked it up. When he saw the caller ID, his face changed and he answered hurriedly. His voice turned hoarse. Where are you? Dalen, do you have to hunt me like this? Lucia asked. Dalen suppressed his raging emotions and told her patiently, Don't you know it's not safe to go out alone? Hearing Dalen's question, Lucia's eyes became misty. She whispered, Do you really care about my safety? Dalen felt his chest tighten and his breathing became heavy. He then replied, I care. At this time, he didn't care about the child and betrayal. He was only concerned about Lucia's safety. And Lucia's answer was, I don't believe you. Dalen's expression was tense as he tried his best to calm her down. Where do you want to travel? I'll go with you. I'm in the hotel right now. Where are you? Dalen, do you think I'm stupid? If you find me, you won't let me get away with this without consequences. Dalen cursed in his heart. She did know him very well. That was exactly what he was going to do. Lucia continued. Dalen, you don't have to look for me. And you can't find me either. I was on the bus you stopped, but I was hiding under the chair and there was a passenger blocking it for me. Dalen's expression changed. You can't chase me anymore. 
By the time you catch up, I'll have already changed my route. Dalen, can't you just leave me alone? The more you chase me like this, the more I want to avoid you. I already promised that I will come back after the new year. After saying that, Lucia hung up. Dalen called again, but it went straight to voicemail. Lucia continued to curl up in her bed. She would not go back with Dalen. How could she continue watching Victoria and him flirting? Of course Dalen wouldn't listen to what Lucia said. Absolutely not. Back in the city, Cole had just got out of bed and was preparing to go grocery shopping with his mother. He had no clue where Lucia was now. He couldn't get through to her phone, and he'd been worrying about her all night. After all, it was Lucia's first trip. What happened? And why didn't she turn on her cell phone? Cole's mind was in a whirl. Just as he finished washing up, he heard the doorbell ring. Cole walked out of the room. Mom, you're early. Before he could finish his sentence, Cole was immediately stunned when he saw the person who walked in. He stood motionlessly in front of the door. His parents were there, and so was Dalen. Cole's mother, who didn't seem to know what was going on, asked Dalen, May I ask who you are looking for? Dalen ignored her and walked into Cole's apartment. He looked around the room with his sharp black eyes. They lingered on Cole's parents. After Cole recovered his wits from the shock, he immediately went up to his parents and pushed them toward the door. Mom, Dad, aren't you guys going to buy groceries? Hurry up and go. Cole's parents looked confused. But he... It's nothing. It's nothing, Cole assured them, trying to get them to just leave as quickly as possible. You know him? His mom asked. Yes, yes. Then please entertain your guests. We'll be back soon. Cole's parents were honest people, so how could they know about the dangers that Dalen posed? Cole finally got rid of his parents with much difficulty and finally closed the door behind them. When he turned around, he saw a tall figure standing by the window and carefully called out, Mr. Patrick? When Dalen turned around, Cole's knees almost gave out. You and Lucia have such a good relationship. Are you willing to sacrifice your life for her? Dalen asked hesitantly. If Lucia is in trouble, I will, Cole said resolutely. What about the lives of your parents? Cole hesitated. What was going on? Cole felt a chill run down his spine. I admit it. That medicine really has nothing to do with me. I didn't get the medicine for Lucia. I don't know what happened. After Cole finished speaking, he silently felt ashamed, but he had to protect his parents. Dalen's face turned vicious. What did you say? What medicine? Uh... Cole cursed inwardly. Was this not the reason that Dalen came here? My patience is limited. Speak clearly. Dalen took two steps forward. His whole body seemed to exude darkness and terror. I I said that I didn't give Lucia the medicine to remove the child, Cole said. Nothing else? Dalen looked at him maliciously. No, no more, Cole said. His heart was filled with fear. He debated whether to say it or not. He was really in a difficult position. In other words, your parents' lives are worthless to you, right? Dalen threatened. Cole couldn't take it at all. It's just that Lucia told me that if I tell you, she'll never speak to me again. Cole stuttered, but Dalen's violent gaze shocked him so much that he blurted out, That medicine was given to her by your mom. As Cole finished his sentence, he wondered if it would cause any serious consequences. Dalen was stunned. His whole body was frozen as he looked at Cole with his black eyes. Spencer, who was nearby, was also shocked because it was so unexpected. Cole took a deep breath. Actually, this matter is somewhat complicated. It was because your mother didn't like Lucia and she didn't want her to give birth to your child. After feeding her bad medicine for a week, she found out Lucia was already pregnant. In other words, after taking a week of medicine, 
the child would have been deformed. So your mom forced Lucia to take the child off her hands to cover up the truth. Why didn't Lucia tell me? Dalen's face was as cold as ice, and his voice was hoarse. Because Lucia said she didn't want you to hate your mother, she fears that one day you will be like her, regretting your loss. Mr. Patrick, Lucia cares a lot about her marriage with you. If she were a selfish person, she would have told you the truth. Dalen left Cole's house without a word. As he walked out of the door, he tripped over the threshold. Mr. Patrick! Spencer was shocked, but Dalen walked out without saying anything. Back at the mansion, Dalen stood in the hall for a long time. John walked forward cautiously. Mr. Patrick, did any of the servants leave during Lucia's pregnancy? Dalen's expression was masked by shadow. Yes, one was fired by you and the other was a maid who said that she had matters to take care of at home, Edward replied. After walking a few steps away, John thought of something and said, Lucia has also asked if there were any servants who left. When John looked over, he closed his mouth. He felt that he had talked too much. After all, Lucia had been expelled from the mansion. She asked, Dalen said. John saw that Dalen's expression didn't change, so he said, She was just asking if any of the servants in the mansion resigned, so I told her the maid resigned. Anything else? John thought for a moment and said, That's all. No more. Dalen stood there motionlessly, and no one else dared to move either. After a long while, Dalen opened his mouth. Go bring that woman here. Yes, sir. Spencer turned around and left. Dalen didn't go anywhere. He just sat on the sofa and waited until the maid was brought back. When the maid saw the person sitting on the sofa, she was so frightened that her face turned pale and she almost couldn't stand up. If I ask you a question, just tell me the truth. Do you understand? Dalen looked at her lazily. However, the atmosphere was especially frightening. Yes? You gave Lucia the pill? I... The madam told me to do it. She said no one would know. The madam paid me after administering the medicine and I left. Mr. Patrick, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. The maid burst into tears. Money? So you like money? The only thing I'm afraid of is that you have all this money, but now you don't have any time left to spend it. Dalen waved his hand as if he was acknowledging a piece of trash. Take her away. The maid was so scared that she forgot to cry. Mr. Patrick, spare me. The madam told me to do it. It's not me. No matter how much she begged, she was still dragged out. Dalen was sitting on the sofa and looked so upset that no one dared to approach him. So Lucia was investigating who drugged her to verify the truth of the matter. She had even asked the doctor about different drugs and their side effects. He had thought that Lucia didn't want their child. He couldn't think of a reason why Lucia would take the child away if it wasn't for Axel. When he asked her that question, she had chosen to remain silent. Dalen was angry at her silence. Apparently, Lucia would rather be hated by him, ruthlessly treated by him, than to say anything. That was the truth. Dalen's black eyes turned red as he tried to suppress the pain that was tearing his chest apart. John was frightened when he saw Dalen acting so distraught. What the maid said just now was even more unbelievable to him. So it wasn't Lucia who took the child away, but Dalen's mother? And yet, Lucia was the one who had to bear it and not speak. This was too pitiful. At this moment, the phone in the hall rang, causing his heart to jump. Edward hesitated for a moment before walking over to pick up the phone. This is the Patrick family residence. Who is it? After a moment of silence, Edward looked at Dalen and replied, Yes, of course. It was Linda. This was not a good time, especially after the truth was revealed. 
However, he still had to tell Dalen about the phone call. Therefore, Edward walked towards Dalen. Mr. Patrick, he began. If you have something to say, just say it. No need to hesitate. Dalen's face turned cold. Yes, your mother has called to invite you over for dinner for Christmas. Edward said in almost a whisper. Dalen's black eyes were so deep that one could not see the bottom. Finally, he said, Tell her that I don't have time. With that, he stood up and left the mansion. Edward and everyone present naturally knew what that meant. Despite discovering that his mother had betrayed him, Dalen was overjoyed. When the pressure in the hall disappeared, John excitedly asked Edward, Edward, now that the misunderstanding is resolved, does that mean that the young mistress can come back? Edward glanced at John, but didn't say anything. John was puzzled. What do you mean? Couldn't she come back? After seeing Mr. Patrick's expression, it seems like he will not blame the young madam anymore. I'm afraid that the young mistress will not be willing to come back, Edward said in an insightful manner. John thought for a moment. That seemed to make sense. Mr. Patrick was really going too far. Needless to say, you should know how sad the young mistress has been the past few weeks, John said in a low voice. Then his expression turned to one of relief. But I think that since Mr. Patrick is so powerful, she will eventually come back. Edward sighed. Yes, she will eventually come back. Lucia was still in the hotel, feeling very proud of herself. She had slipped away right under Dalen's nose. She wanted to laugh when she thought about how shocked the receptionist had looked when she came out of the room. At that time, Lucia had been too tired, and she didn't want to explain anymore. Anyway, she didn't steal anything. Presumably, the man at the front desk knew that she was the one Dalen was looking for. After all, he had made a lot of commotion last night. Lucia's face slightly changed when she thought of Dalen. Her heart felt heavy. Why would he not let her travel? He seemed worried about her, but she just didn't believe it. Dalen cared about Victoria now. Perhaps in the new year, the divorce agreement will finally happen. Why did Lucia want to travel alone? Perhaps she also had the thought of running away. Although she knew that she would have to go back sooner or later, she didn't want to think about that now. Before going out, she made up her mind to not think about Dalen. She knew that if he took her back to the mansion, she wouldn't be able to escape again. It would be better to have this time of freedom. When Axel returned home, his expression and mood didn't look too good. He didn't even notice the people walking past him. Catherine frowned and pulled Axel over. Didn't you see me? What's wrong? Where's your dad? Axel came back to reality and saw that it was his mother. He relaxed his expression and said, Dad has a social meetup, so he won't be back for dinner tonight. What's wrong with you? Nothing happened, right? Catherine asked. I'm fine. You don't look fine. You still want to hide this from me? Your father won't tell me anything, and you won't tell me anything. Maybe if you tell me, I can help you? Axel looked a little down and worried. Lucia went on a vacation. I'm very worried. I'm wondering if I should go look for her. Lucia went on a trip? With whom? Catherine guessed as she looked at Axel's worried expression. Is she alone? Axel was silent for a moment, then said, If one day Lucia and I are together, I hope you can accept her. You like her that much? Catherine was shocked. Axel walked towards the study without saying anything. However, his expression explained everything. Catherine did not have to worry about Axel's emotions. Ever since he was young, Axel had been intensely private. The only thing she could think of was why Lucia would be traveling alone. Did Dalen let her go? Was this a trip, or was it something else? Catherine excitedly went to Victoria's room. Victoria was planting flowers on the balcony. The windows on the balcony were closed and heated. 
Otherwise, no matter how beautiful the flowers and plants were, they would have been frozen to death in winter. Victoria! Catherine walked into the room with a large smile on her face. Victoria put down the scissors and asked, Catherine, what's making you so happy? I have good news. What is it? Lucia ran away from home. What? Ran away from home? Victoria thought of something and said, Isn't she just staying at her dad's old house? That isn't necessarily running away. Not this time, Catherine said. What do you mean? Victoria asked. Your brother said Lucia went on a solo trip. No one knows when she'll be back. It seems that she is acknowledging that she's been beaten, Catherine said happily. Victoria was also happy with Lucia's actions, but after thinking about it, she asked, What about Dalen? What did he think? Does he care? I'm sure he doesn't. Otherwise, Lucia wouldn't be traveling alone. What do you think? Catherine asked. That may not be the case. Lucia has always been cunning. If she really wanted to travel without Dalen, it would not be impossible. When Dalen finds out, he'll definitely go find Lucia, Victoria said with a frown. Don't worry, I will help you find out everything that's happening. Catherine's plan was to first go talk to Linda, but when she arrived, Linda was not in a good mood either. It was because Edward had called back to say that Dalen wouldn't come over for Christmas dinner and would be busy during the holidays. Linda, I came to see you. Catherine giggled as she entered the room. She hadn't noticed Linda's bad mood because Linda had a fake smile on her face. The members of Robert's family always came with a purpose, and she had to be prepared. Of course, she knew what this was about. Sit down. Linda gestured to the chair beside her. Catherine sat down. It's been a few days since I've come to see you. Your complexion is just getting better and better. Catherine really didn't know how to speak when she was trying to be sneaky. However, Linda kept a straight face. Catherine was still smart. Otherwise, she would not have made it this far in their family. Thank you for thinking of me, Linda said with a smile. Catherine continued. However, I came here today to tell you something that I'm sure will put you in a better mood. What is it? Linda asked. Lucia ran away from home. Linda stopped drinking her tea. What did you say? It's true. She was angry and ran away from home. Linda's expression changed. And Dalen knows about it, right? Linda asked. How could he not know? You and I have never liked Lucia. But now that she has left, it's even better for our plan. It would be best if she never came back, Catherine said happily. Linda did not like Lucia, but it was still very uncomfortable for her to speak against the girl she had tricked so badly. Linda's expression changed. Catherine thought that it was because of Lucia and not because of what she had said, so she continued. Linda, after Dalen found out about this, if he didn't immediately go look for her, then it would mean that he has already given up on Lucia. Lucia really brought this upon herself. Who would dare to put on airs in front of Dalen? She is truly a selfish person who has taken advantage of our family. It is all thanks to the fact that Dalen doted on her in the past. Enough. Linda interrupted her in an impatient manner. Catherine stuttered to a stop. You can leave. I'm a bit tired. Linda acted as if she didn't see the stiffness on Catherine's face and directly ordered her to leave. All right then, Linda. You rest first. I'll come see you soon. Catherine didn't dare to say anything else. She stood up and left with a smile on her face. After Catherine left, Linda couldn't fake a smile anymore. She forcefully placed the cup on the coffee table. Seeing that, her maid said, Linda, what's wrong with you? Be careful of the pain in your hands. Linda huffed. What's wrong? Didn't you hear what Catherine said? What Edward said on the phone? He said that Dalen doesn't have time to come over for dinner on Christmas. 
I think it's not that he doesn't have time. It's that he's spending all his time on Lucia. Linda was outraged. Miss, maybe your son really is busy. After all, he is in charge of such a huge business. You don't need to comfort me. I can even see through this. He still can't let go of Lucia, no matter how much Lucia hurt him. Couldn't he just leave it alone when he heard that Lucia was traveling alone? The maid was speechless. She was indeed not sure about Dalen's actions. He always came to eat with Linda during holidays. But not this year. However, if Dalen didn't want to come, then there was nothing they could do. At Robert's house, Axel kept calling Lucia from the study room, but her phone was always off. Why did she shut down her phone? Did she not want to be disturbed by anyone? Suddenly, there was a knocking on the door of the study room. The person that entered was Robert. Not eating anymore? He asked. Axel just realized that it was time to eat. Robert looked at the phone in Axel's hand and asked, Who are you calling? Perhaps it was because he already knew what was going on. He added, Did you get through? Nope. Axel hung his head. Lucia is not smart, but she has a bad temper. I wonder if that's a good thing for Dalen. Robert's words were laced with a mocking tone. Axel sighed deeply. Lucia, she... It's a really sad situation. Isn't it just that their child is gone? What's there to be sad about? Are they really going to get a divorce over that? Robert scoffed. They didn't get divorced, Axel corrected. Anyway, whether they get divorced or not, you're not allowed to get involved. Victoria can marry Dalen, but Lucia can't be with you, Robert said. Then, without caring about Axel's response, he stood up and left. Axel's response changed and became calm. It was normal for Lucia's phone to be off. Even if she turned it on now, there might be no signal where she was traveling. Axel didn't even know where she had gone. Didn't she say there were tourist attractions nearby with mountains and rivers that she wanted to visit? Out in the countryside, Lucia was tired out from walking around and stopped for a break at what looked like a tourist market. There were still people setting up stalls along the road, and Lucia crouched beside a stall and sat on a rock. The booth beside her was owned by an old lady in her 60s. She wore an old-fashioned woven hat, and her face was full of wrinkles. However, there was a kind look in her eyes. She was selling snacks and small cakes. As the fragrance drifted over, Lucia was about to stand up and buy one, when suddenly someone handed a cake to her. Hungry? Eat one, the old lady said. Lucia was stunned. She said, It's all right, I won't take your money. Besides, this old woman seemed quite poor already. Ah, why? The old lady said, Take it. The old woman pressed the cake into Lucia's hand. It was still warm, and the heat spread on her palm, warming her heart. The old lady must have thought that Lucia had no money, which was why she acted this way. Lucia wanted to say that she did, in fact, have money. However, looking at the woman's loving eyes, she didn't say anything and just ate the cake. It was really delicious. It tasted even better than it smelled. I've been cooking here for decades, and no one has ever had a complaint. The old woman smiled. Thank you, it's really delicious. Lucia's mouth bulged with food. She felt mixed emotions in her heart. She didn't come out here to be spoon-fed. She came out here to beg for money. Too pitiful, Lucia had once again become a beggar. She quickly ate the cake, and the baker said, Do you want more? I'm not eating anymore. I'm full. Lucia shook her head. Seeing how thin you are, I can tell you don't eat much. Lucia wanted to say, Don't judge me by how thin I am. Trust me, I can eat. However, she was afraid that if she said she wanted to eat more, the old lady would continue to refuse to accept her money. Are you a foreigner? Did you come here for a trip? Yeah, I'm traveling. And your money was stolen? 
The old lady asked again. Lucia didn't answer. The scenery here is beautiful, but there are many thieves here. I've seen a lot of people who have been robbed, the woman warned. Lucia looked at the old lady, feeling flustered. A lot? Many. You have to be more careful. I will. Thank you. As the two of them chatted, it started to snow. It's snowing? Lucia was delighted, as if she had discovered something new. Reaching out, she let the snow fall in her hand and then slowly melt away. After seeing this, the old lady began to pack her things. It's snowing. I'm going back. Lucia immediately went to help her clean up, but the old woman stopped her. Thank you, dear, but there's no need. I can handle it myself. It's all right. You just gave me a cake for free. Just let me help clean up. The old lady smiled and didn't say anything. She just let Lucia help. When everything was packed, the old lady pushed the cart and said, Well, I'm going. All right, be safe. The road will be slippery when the snow starts to stick, Lucia warned. Where do you live? The woman asked. Is there a hotel here? There are only lodgings and no hotels. Lucia ended up staying in the old lady's house because the woman's family often hosted tourists, so there was a special room. Although the furnishings were quite ordinary, they could still be considered complete, and there was enough heat to keep Lucia warm. The old woman was the only one who lived in the house. Her children had all grown up and moved away and rarely came back to visit. Lucia asked the old lady why she didn't go and live with her children. The old lady said she didn't want to burden the young people. This was truly a kind-hearted old woman. Lucia stayed there. Also, she felt very satisfied with her life here. Lucia didn't want to turn on her phone, so she couldn't play games and quickly became bored. But the old lady had a landline, and Lucia stared blankly at the phone, wondering if she should give Cole a call, but she decided against it. She didn't want Cole to worry about her during the holidays. Lucia went to the kitchen to help. What's for lunch? she asked. I'll make you whatever you like. The old lady smiled. Lucia looked at the smile and asked, You seem to be very happy. Do you feel the same way about every tourist who comes to stay? Yeah, I've been living here by myself for a long time, so it is more lively with visitors here. Lucia felt a little sour in her heart when she heard this, thinking of how she and her father had quarreled. The old woman continued, How many days do you want to stay? It's almost Christmas and the New Year. Shouldn't you go back and celebrate with your family? The old lady said, my parents are dead. I have no family left. The old lady stopped cooking and looked at Lucia with pity. So I'm planning to stay here for the new year. Is that okay with you? Of course. You can stay as long as you want. Dalen searched everywhere for Lucia. However, no matter how hard he searched, he couldn't find her. Dalen knew that Lucia wasn't in a big city. If she was, she would be easier to track. They had searched all around the hotel, but no trace of Lucia could be found. If Lucia was deliberately hiding, it would be even more difficult to find her. However, Dalen didn't give up and continued to search. The closer it got to the end of the year, the more Dalen panicked. He did not want Lucia to celebrate the New Year alone. He wouldn't allow it, and he couldn't bear it. Dalen walked into the bedroom he and Lucia used to share. The wolfhound pendant with the crystal still hung on the bedside lamp. Every night he stroked it countless times. He missed the way she looked by his side, the way she bit him. He thought of all her loveliness. Why did he ever doubt her intentions? Dalen had to admit that it was because he was too jealous and judgmental. Dalen didn't know that he could be so irritable. He stood at the window and looked out at the roses he planted for Lucia, then turned around and left. When he walked up to the roses, he noticed that a few were wilting. Dalen's expression immediately turned gloomy. Someone come here, he yelled. Spencer immediately walked forward. Mr. Patrick. 
No withered roses are to be left in this bed. Yes, sir. Spencer immediately ordered people to change it. The withering seemed to imply something, so it could not be tolerated, because he wouldn't allow it. After the roses were dealt with, Dalen left and didn't return to the mansion. He only took the wolfhound pendant with him. When Linda came to the mansion hours later, it was ice cold inside. It was as if the mansion had been abandoned and no longer had any warmth. Where's Dalen? Linda asked Edward. Mr. Patrick is out, Edward replied. Isn't he coming back? Linda's expression was worried and impatient. Mr. Patrick has been very busy lately and doesn't have time to come back, Edward said. I heard that Lucia ran away from home. Dalen must have gone to look for her, right? Linda pretended to be calm as she asked. We servants are not allowed to speak about Mr. Patrick's affairs, Edward replied. Linda knew Edward's loyalty, but she couldn't tell if he was lying or not. What happened in the mansion recently? Linda asked. Nothing happened, Edward said. No? How come I heard that Lucia ran away from home? Linda asked. It's like this. The young madam does not live in the mansion, but she did not run away from home. She is staying in her father's house, Edward said. Linda's expression worsened. Of course, Edward wouldn't tell her what she wanted to know. Linda wanted to know what was going on. For some reason, all the servants said they didn't know. It was as if something was being purposely hidden from her. However, there was no way to find out. It was hard for her to go without seeing Dalen for so long. Did Dalen go to find Lucia? She asked again. Apologies, madame. I don't know, Edward said firmly. Linda's expression almost became tense. Edward simply stood up and left. Linda was not the only one who came to look for Dalen. Victoria also came. However, she was stopped outside the castle and was not allowed to enter. This was because Dalen had said before that she was not allowed to enter without his permission. Victoria realized how painful her heart would feel after being rejected by him. For Lucia, Dalen would do anything. However, she wouldn't give up. So Victoria stood outside the door and waited. Dalen didn't come back from daybreak until nightfall. Miss, let's go back. You haven't eaten for a whole day and your body is still recovering. You have to be careful, Jerrica advised. Maybe if Dalen knew that I had broken my body because of him, he would have looked at me one more time, Victoria asked in distress. Definitely, but Mr. Patrick is not here right now. Even if your body was damaged, he wouldn't be able to see it. Jerrica tried to reason with the lovesick Victoria. Why does Lucia exist? Why must Dalen have Lucia? Why? Victoria cried as she finished her sentence, then fell to the ground. Jerrica was so frightened that she shouted loudly, Victoria! In the hall, a servant said to John, Miss fainted outside the door. Did you send her away? John asked. Not yet. I was just coming to ask Edward. What should I do? John stopped him. What's the use in notifying Edward? We need to send her home to recover. We don't have a doctor here. Yes. The servant left immediately to make arrangements. John did not want Victoria to enter the mansion again. After Victoria returned home, she gradually woke up. Jerrica then gave her the medicine. Catherine was so annoyed that her heart almost broke. Seriously, what happened to you? It's fine to go to the mansion, but you destroyed your own body. Is it really worth it? If I thought that maybe Dalen would come out to see me, even if I was sick. But Jerrica said that Dalen wasn't there. Where did he go? Did he go to find Lucia? If Lucia is not coming back, does that mean he is not coming back either? Victoria grabbed Catherine's hand and asked anxiously, This, it, it can't be, right? Catherine didn't know whether her question was for herself or Victoria. She really couldn't be sure. Right, that won't happen. 
It's almost the new year. There's no way he would miss being here with his family for the holidays. Victoria consoled herself. However, Dalen didn't come back for Christmas. Or after. For days, Dalen did not show up. It was as if the person who went missing was not only Lucia, but also Dalen. Dalen was now looking for Lucia everywhere. It didn't matter what the accommodations were like, he said, while he searched in rundown hotels in the remote countryside. No one knew that they had one of the wealthiest people in the country staying in their lodgings, and Dalen didn't care. Dalen's only thought was to find Lucia. When he wasn't searching for her, Dalen stood motionlessly by the window. It was dark outside, and Spencer walked into the room and looked at the motionless figure. He spoke hesitantly. Mr. Patrick, I did not find any trace of the young mistress. How many days until the new year? Five days. I must find her before then, no matter the cost. Dalen's black eyes were filled with a crazy determination. Yes, sir, Spencer answered. However, he was not optimistic. It seemed like Lucia didn't want to be found, so they had no choice but to search, inch by inch. Spencer hoped that Lucia could feel Dalen's anxiousness and that she would appear. However, he knew it was unlikely. He had seen the fight between the two of them and how badly Dalen had behaved. When Spencer saw Dalen's painful expression every day, he knew that even if Lucia did something wrong, he would forgive her sooner or later. In the evening, Lucia was sitting at the table with her host for dinner. The woman made tasty food with a natural and simple flavor. I don't ever want to leave, Lucia said as she ate. The old woman smiled and said, Then don't go. The wrinkles on her face were especially kind. Lucia looked at her warmly. It was as if she finally had a family member. But she also knew that she was only staying here temporarily. She still had to go back after the new year. There were people that needed her. I'll make some chicken soup for you tomorrow, the woman said. No, you don't have to do that. Lucia refused. Don't you like chicken? That's not it. I feel bad eating all this food you're making, Lucia admitted. You're too kind. I'm happy to make you food, the woman said. Is that true? Lucia was curious. Yes, she said. You are the kindest person that I've ever met, Lucia said, meaning every word. Who else would be willing to give a stranger cake without money? In the place where she grew up, those who had money never really shared with those who didn't. Hearing Lucia's words, the old woman was very happy, and she kept urging Lucia to eat. After eating her fill, Lucia rushed to wash the dishes before the woman could argue. At night, Lucia lay in bed in a daze. When she had first come here, she would still miss people and things. But really, who she missed the most was Dalen. Every time she thought about him, her heart ached and she wanted to cry. Sometimes she was angry. Sometimes she wanted to curse at him. Mostly, she just missed him. Lucia hated that she missed Dalen. After all, if she had married Axel, none of this would have happened. Thinking about Dalen's disregard for her, about him bringing the woman back to the castle and being intimate with Victoria, Lucia felt like she was going to die from anger. But what could she do? She couldn't beat Dalen. After some thought, she fell asleep and slept until dawn. She wanted to wake up early in the morning to make breakfast for her host. However, every time she thought about getting up early, she found that breakfast had already been made. When the woman came into the room and saw Lucia, who had woken up, she said, Let's have oatmeal this morning. Lucia looked at her in a daze, thinking about the oatmeal she had eaten in the mansion. As they ate, Lucia asked, Cynthia, are you going to set up a stall today? Yes, the old woman, Cynthia, replied. Then I'll go with you. No need. It's not too far. I'll go by myself. I have nothing to do at home, so let me go. Lucia really had nothing to do. 
She just stayed at home and talked to herself every day, but she wanted to help. All right, you can come if you want to, Cynthia said. After breakfast, they went to set up the stall. However, Lucia noticed that there weren't many people around, even though it was late in the afternoon. There were very few people, and Cynthia didn't sell very many of her goods. Cynthia, is there no larger town nearby? Lucia asked. Yes, there is, Cynthia answered. Then we should go to the town to sell it. There are definitely more people there than here. I'm alone, and I'm old, so I can't go that far. You were once alone, but now you have me. I'll go with you, Lucia said excitedly. Cynthia decided that she wanted to go as well. Besides, it was good to be able to earn money and sell more snacks. Still, she hesitated. It will be hard. Even though Cynthia was old, she could tell that Lucia had never done any real hard labor before. Her hands were as soft as satin. It doesn't matter. I'm not afraid of the hardships, and I find it very invigorating, Lucia said. Under Lucia's insistence, Cynthia finally agreed. So, the two of them pushed the cart towards the town. Lucia thought to herself as she walked along, I should work out more. If she couldn't even endure this little bit of suffering, what would become of her? When they arrived at the town, Lucia almost passed out from exhaustion. However, after finally seeing the town, Lucia felt that all her hard work was worth it. The small town in the street looked a little like a western resort town. Perhaps it was because there was a tourist attraction here. At the market, there were many stalls and all sorts of strange gadgets. Lucia looked at Cynthia and smiled so much that her eyes looked like little slits. She asked, Cynthia, how long has it been since you last came to sell here? I haven't been here for two years. It's changed a lot, Cynthia said as she looked around. Lucia thought to herself, Cynthia definitely won't be able to come here by herself. When she gets old and can't walk anymore, she definitely won't come here. Lucia felt that it was the right decision to bring Cynthia to the town today. From now on, we will come here every day to set up our stall, Lucia said. You like helping me? Cynthia asked. Hmm, I really like it. The two of them quickly found a spot at the corner of the street. Soon after they set up, someone came up to buy cakes and other snacks. Lucia helped to collect money while Cynthia cooked. For the first time, Lucia felt the pleasure of doing business, especially while she was collecting money. The feeling of accomplishment was indescribably joyful. While business was busy, a few young men approached the stall. It sounded like they were collecting seller's fees. The customers saw that these people weren't easy to deal with, so they parted the way toward the counter. Cynthia and Lucia looked at these young men nervously, not knowing what they were going to do. They were unfamiliar with this place, so they didn't want to offend anyone. Who let you set up your stall here? Did you get our permission? The man in the lead asked. Sorry, sir. We are just doing some business, Lucia explained. Doesn't a small business need our permission to sell here? The man cut her off, looking extremely arrogant. Lucia sized up the young men and asked, Are you the town security here? Why aren't you wearing a uniform? We don't need uniforms. We have the final say in this town, the man said. Lucia saw that these men were not to be trifled with, so she tactfully said, Then we won't do it anymore. I'm sorry, we will leave now. Lucia started to pack, but she felt one grab her arm, signaling her not to move. Lucia stood there stunned, not knowing what she was going to do. What's wrong? she asked. You'll need to pay a fee. Lucia lowered her head to look at the box of money in her hands, then looked up at those people. She understood. How much do you want? Lucia asked. We want everything, including your phone. But we just came here for a little while and only sold a few cakes. Can't you just take a portion? Lucia's expression turned ugly as she realized how cruel they were being. What was the difference between this and robbery? So what? Everyone who sets up shop here has to pay the fees. We can't make exceptions. 
The leader nodded at the other stalls with a stick. Lucia looked over and saw that no one else dared to make a sound. Lucia thought about trying to fight them off. However, she would have to face six or seven people, and Cynthia was still around. But if you really don't want to give it to me, there is still a way, the leader said with a malicious grin. Lucia looked at the man's disgusting eyes as she asked with caution, What is it? Lucia had piqued a leader's interest. How about this? Eat dinner with me. I'll take you out for some delicious food, the leader said. Cynthia was listening and could tell that this guy harbored malicious intentions and was afraid that Lucia would suffer. She hurriedly said, I'm sorry, everyone. My granddaughter doesn't understand anything. You can have all of this money. We don't want it anymore, so I won't set up a stall here ever again. We're so sorry. That's it. It was just getting interesting, the other men said. Lucia didn't want to get involved with them. Besides, it was just a few dollars. Lucia gave them the money in the metal box and her cell phone. That's all we have. Nothing more, Lucia said. However, when the man saw the broken screen on her phone, he asked, Is this even valuable? Only the screen is broken. Everything else is good, Lucia said. The leader was still wondering if the phone was a fake when a man next to him stretched his head over and said in surprise, Boss, this phone is so valuable. How do you know? I read about it on the news. Most people can't afford to buy this kind of phone. The man looked at Lucia with a puzzled expression. Why would a stall owner have such an expensive phone? How about this? If you don't believe me, you can go to the phone shop and ask if it's worth money. Lucia said. If we go, you guys could escape. Our boss has his eyes on you. You won't be able to run away, one of the men said. If you're worried, then leave two people here to watch us. We can't run even if we wanted to, Lucia said with a sweet smile. Sure, I'm guessing that you won't be able to pull any tricks. The leading man followed his underlings to the phone shop leaving behind two underlings to watch Cynthia and Lucia. Cynthia was so scared that she pulled Lucia's hand and whispered, You run. I'll stop them. I'm an old woman and they won't do anything to me. Lucia was very touched, but she refused to put Cynthia in danger. This whole thing had been her idea. Cynthia, don't worry. We'll get out of this together. But how? I have an idea. Lucia looked over in the direction of the phone store and exclaimed, Ah, they came back so quickly? While the two lackeys turned to look, Lucia raised a brick and threw it at them. One of them was knocked unconscious. The other one tried to turn around, but the brick directly hit his forehead and his eyes rolled back as he fainted. Cynthia looked at the two unconscious people in surprise. Lucia hurriedly packed up her things. Cynthia, quickly, we have to run. Otherwise, they will be back very soon. Cynthia came back to her senses and immediately started packing up as well. When the leading man and his underlings came over happily, all they saw were their underlings who were lying on the ground. The stall had long since disappeared. He was so angry that he used his leg to kick the person on the ground and woke him up. Where the hell are they? He yelled. The two of them got up from the ground still feeling dizzy. Boss, we were knocked unconscious, so they ran away. All you had to do was watch two women, one old and one weak. What's the use of you two? The boss slapped them both. However, the lackey did not dare to be angry nor say anything. After stewing over their losses, the men went to the best restaurant in town. The boss was looking at his new phone while rubbing his chin. His eyes flashed with calculation. The underling beside him comforted. Boss, calm down. This phone is worth a lot of money. That girl isn't lying. The boss grinned wickedly and said, <laughs> Now that I have this phone, I don't believe that girl can escape me. Boss, what do you mean? One of the men asked. When someone calls, I'll answer. 
and I'll be able to find out where that girl is living. Then I'll go find her myself. The boss's eyes bloomed with a wretched light. Dylan had tried to call Lucia every day. He called her every few minutes, and every time her phone was turned off. At this point, it was more of a habit. He never expected that the call would connect. Then, finally, someone answered his call. Dalen's heart immediately tightened. He replied in a low and hoarse voice as if he was suppressing his emotions. Where are you? The boss was shocked by that low voice. He couldn't see the caller ID, nor did he know who it was. He cleared his throat and said, Are you a friend of the owner of this phone? Dalen's sharp black eyes darkened. Who are you? It's like this. I'm a friend of the owner of this phone, and she has left her phone here. I want to send it to her, but I don't know where she lives. Do you? I can return it to her. After his boss had finished speaking, the lackey beside him still gave him a thumbs up. Dalen remained calm. Where are you? I'm in a town not too far away from where she lives, so there's no need to trouble yourself. I'll personally send it to her. You know where she lives, don't you? The boss urged. Sure, Dalen said after a long pause. Then tell me the address. After Dalen said the address, his eyes were so cold that there was no trace of humanity. When Dalen hung up, the boss put down the phone with a thoughtful look on his face. Boss, what's wrong? The lackey asked. The address is a little far away, but no matter, as long as I get what I want. That's right, boss. When you're done with her, maybe we could have a good time, too. The lackeys had wretched looks on their faces. No, I'm going to keep her as a long-term girlfriend, so don't even think about it, the boss warned. Boss, you can't be thinking of marrying her, right? The boss wasn't angry about being teased. On the contrary, he was delighted. Then he asked, Should I buy her some presents? I don't want her to be scared of me. Boss, girls love roses the most. Roses represent love. All right, let's do it. The boss and his lackeys headed out to find the girl. The car holding the boss and his followers made it to the address Dalen provided. Boss, it's here, one of the men said. But why would she live in a hotel? Maybe she wanted to get a private room with you, another man suggested. Boss, you're so lucky. Follow me. The boss was ecstatic. He couldn't wait to kiss his beauty, so he waved his hand and entered the hotel. He climbed the stairs and found the door to the room. Several muscular men in black stood at the door. The crew looked at them with uncertainty, and the boss felt that something was off. This was because the men's attitude was somewhat unfriendly. At this moment, Spencer walked up. You're the one who answered the phone? The boss asked. The person you're looking for is waiting for you in the room, Spencer said. A subordinate beside him whispered, Boss, could this be a trap? If an ordinary person experienced this unusual atmosphere, they would definitely turn around and leave. However, the boss was used to rough crowds, so he wasn't afraid anymore. What are you afraid of? No one dares to offend me. The crew was about to enter the room, but the lackey behind him was stopped by Spencer. Only one person is allowed inside. Why? We came together, so of course we'll go in together. The boss didn't seem to mind the rule. You guys wait outside. Since their boss had spoken, they could only obey. After the boss, Matt, entered the room, his whole body shivered from the cold. It was as if he had entered an ice house, not a room. After entering, he saw a man sitting on the sofa. He wore a black suit. The way he sat there motionlessly gave Matt goosebumps. Didn't you say the owner of the phone is here? I'm here to return her phone. Although Matt was unhappy because he did not see Lucia, he was intimidated by the powerful-looking man to the point where he did not dare to raise his voice. Dalen raised his eyes. 
His sharp gaze seemed to be able to pierce a person's soul. Looking at Matt, Dalen's thin lips opened for a moment. Did she leave her phone at your place? Yeah, so I'm returning her phone, okay? Matt suddenly recognized that the person who answered the phone was the man in front of him. He didn't dare to act rashly. The color in Dalen's eyes changed. Spencer walked in from outside and kicked Matt's leg. <clears throat> Matt kneeled on the ground in pain. He couldn't get up no matter how hard he tried. And then he shouted, You dare to attack me? Do you know who I am? Do you want to die? Ah! Matt screamed once again because Spencer had stepped on his ankle, nearly crushing it. Matt was in so much pain that his skin was about to turn white. Take out the phone, Spencer said. Matt hated being humiliated. Didn't his crew hear his shouts? Why weren't they coming to back him up? However, what Matt didn't know was that Spencer had taken care of all his subordinates before he came in. It had been as easy as stepping on ants. I... I don't have it with me. Ah! Another scream erupted from Matt's throat. This time, his bones were probably broken. If you want to be able to stand up in the future, I would start cooperating, Spencer warned. I have it. I have it on me. It was the first time Matt had admitted defeat. He had always been arrogant when bullying the common people. Take it out, Spencer ordered. Matt took out the phone with trembling hands. The moment he took it out, Dalen's black eyes trembled. Spencer naturally knew that this was Lucia's phone. He took the phone and handed it over to Dalen. Dalen held the phone in his hand and touched the cracks on the screen with his fingers. It was as if the cracks had been imprinted on his heart. How did you get this phone? Dalen asked. I... I... If you don't tell me the truth, I will make you want to die. Dalen looked at Matt as if he was looking at a dead man. Matt had never seen such a gaze before, and he was quite frightened. He could only say, She... She and an old woman set up a food stall in the town, and I went to collect the seller fees. She had no money, so I took her cell phone as payment. She's still there? Dalen asked as his eyes twitched slightly. No, she ran away. Dalen's gaze was so ferocious that it made Matt's heart shiver. However, in the blink of an eye, Dalen said, Take me to the stall. After which, he stood up and left the room. Spencer directly picked Matt up and dragged him to the car. He did not see any trace of his subordinates. However, looking at the bodyguards on his left and right, Matt felt that even if his crew was here, they wouldn't be able to do anything. Matt was terrified. Who exactly was he dealing with? Following the route, they arrived at the small town and drove to the corner of the street, the place where Lucia and Cynthia had set up their stall. However, it was still empty. No one was setting up a stall there. Matt pointed and said, They were here. Dalen looked at the empty spot. His chest also seemed to be empty. He looked around and walked back and forth twice. He didn't see anyone, not even a surveillance camera. There was no way to trace Lucia from here. Dalen's face was frighteningly sinister as he turned around and kicked Matt in the chest. <laughs> Matt immediately spat out a mouthful of blood and fell to the ground. Dalen stepped on Matt's face with his foot. He looked down from above and said sinisterly, Did you get my permission to touch her? I didn't touch her. She ran away. Matt defended himself. If you didn't touch her, then why did she run? Dalen stomped down forcefully. The sound of Matt's jaw being dislocated could be heard. Matt wailed and was speechless. When the people from the other stalls saw this, they felt relieved. Matt had been bullying them forever, so it was nice to see someone finally confronting him. Therefore, when Spencer went over to ask questions about Lucia and Cynthia, those people told him everything because they were grateful. Spencer walked in front of Dalen and said, Mr. Patrick, 
the young madam was indeed here with an elderly woman. No one recognized them, so they aren't from this town. Those people said that as soon as they came to set up the stall, the men came to collect their fees. Lucia helplessly gave her phone to them. When the men went to the phone shop, the young lady used a brick to knock out two of the guard's subordinates and took the chance to run away with the old woman. There was no doubt that it was Lucia. However, when Dalen heard how Lucia was treated, his face turned as cold as a devil's. Without even looking at Matt, who was lying on the ground like a dead dog, he said, We're done here. Yes, sir. Spencer instructed the guards to drag Matt away immediately. That's where the trail ended. However, this was the most hope Dalen had felt in days. Since Lucia appeared here, it meant that her residence shouldn't be too far away. With the village as the center, they spread out to search for her. In the evening, Lucia and Cynthia busied themselves with dinner. Cynthia, I'm sorry. If I hadn't suggested that we go to the town to sell some snacks, today's incident wouldn't have happened. The money, it's gone, Lucia said apologetically. But I also agreed to your idea. Besides, you're kind and I was excited to do some business in a different town. Nobody could have known that such a thing would happen. I'm sorry they took your phone away. She had heard those people say that it was very expensive and that ordinary people couldn't afford it. No matter how expensive it is, it's still just a worldly possession, Lucia said, shaking her head. You really scared me. If you weren't smart, you would have been at a disadvantage. In this world, there are places that aren't safe, Cynthia said helplessly. Lucia was very aware of the dangers in the world, especially after she married Dalen. Having power and influence was more terrifying than anything. A single sentence could ruin a person's life. Then let's only set up our stall in the tourist area from now on, Cynthia said. All right, I'm not going to town. Lucia felt guilty in her heart. She clearly had good intentions, but such a bad thing happened in the end. She hoped those people wouldn't find their way here. Otherwise, wouldn't she be harming Cynthia? The next morning, Lucia went out to the yard to feed the chickens. When the chickens saw her, they got very excited, but mostly because of the food in her hand. Even so, it put a smile on Lucia's face. Little chickens, don't worry. I won't eat you. However, if Cynthia eats you, you have to be mentally prepared. Lucia said as she fed them. The old hen immediately let out two cries and raised her head. <laughs> Don't tell me you understand what I'm saying. All right, I was just joking. Neither of us will eat you. After Lucia finished her sentence, the hen lowered her head and pecked again. Lucia's interest was greatly piqued. For the past two days, Cynthia didn't set up a stall to prepare New Year's food at home. Lucia didn't need to go out. However, she still wandered around. There was snow in the mountains, and one day Lucia stood by the lake and looked at the thick layer of ice. She wanted to know what it felt like to step on it. Lucia had never seen a frozen lake. Lucia tested the ice with the rock, but the ice remained motionless. There wasn't even a crack, so she slid out onto it. It was such a strange sensation. Lucia trotted forward, but when she stopped, her foot slipped out from underneath her. <laughs> Lucia was having a lot of fun. However, she still wasn't very good at controlling her movements on the ice and often slipped. Ah! Lucia fell onto the ice. Luckily, she was wearing lots of layers of clothes, so it didn't hurt much. She got up again and continued to slip away. Meanwhile, Dalen's people had found the tourist area, However, there were many villages near the tourist area, and they still needed to search inch by inch. Dalen's mood was beyond irritable. He had a hard time controlling it. The closer it got to the new year, the more painful his heart became. There was only one more day until the new year. Spencer and the rest of his crew were already moving very quickly, but not quickly enough. Dalen knew that he would find her somewhere in this region, but time was of the essence. 
Most people wouldn't be able to tell Dalen's mood from his appearance, but Spencer could clearly feel that Dalen was about to collapse. It was clear that Dalen had no intention of going back to celebrate New Year's. He would rather keep looking for Lucia. He couldn't give up. Cynthia, tomorrow is the new year. I'm very happy, Lucia said. Actually, she had already realized by now that not a single one of Cynthia's family members had returned to visit her for the holidays. She knew that Cynthia said her children were busy, but how could parents not miss their children? Maybe that's why they met, so they could be there for each other. Because it's New Year's Eve, we will first go and pray at the church in the tourist area. Then we will come back for a New Year's Eve meal, Cynthia said. Cool. Is that a custom here? Lucia asked. Yes, we have to pray for the year's success, Cynthia laughed. Lucia felt that this was quite novel. So on the day of New Year's Eve, they prepared to go to church in the tourist area. Cynthia, why are we going so early? We still have plenty of time before New Year's Eve dinner. There are always a lot of people. We have to get there before the rush, Cynthia said. Lucia thought, there's no need to go now. However, after they arrived, Lucia saw that Cynthia's words made sense. The tourist area was suddenly filled with people. There were people everywhere, and all of them were headed to the church. Cynthia, do you think we could make a huge profit if we set up our stall here? Lucia joked. It's the new year, so we don't set up stalls. <laughs> yes, no stalls. Both of them lined up for a long time. Lucia felt like her legs were about to break by the time she made it to the church. However, she could not rest. She still had to climb the stairs to reach the church. Lucia found that Cynthia's legs were stronger than hers. What a shame. Across the street, Spencer walked up to Dalen. Mr. Patrick, if the young mistress is living in this area, she will definitely come to the church. This is the custom here. Spencer said. Dalen stood in the crowd, ignoring the occasional bumps from the bystanders, each time hoping the next face would be Lucia's, the person he had been thinking about day and night. My God, we're finally here, Lucia gasped as they made it to the top of the stairs. Why don't you take a break? Cynthia suggested. No need. I can rest after, Lucia said. After praying, go up to the cross and touch it three times. Cynthia pointed to the other side of the chapel. That? Lucia asked, pointing to the wooden cross. Yes, when you touch it, think about what you want to achieve, Cynthia advised. Lucia felt that Cynthia was really superstitious. However, it was usual when one entered the country. Furthermore, she had always felt that such matters were more likely to be believed. There was one other person Lucia knew who was as religious as Cynthia, and that was Linda. She didn't know how Linda spent her year. Lucia shook off the thoughts in her head and followed Cynthia to stand in line to pray. Dalen searched for Lucia in the crowd all morning. Then, as he gazed at the prayer line in the church, his eyes suddenly froze as he stared intently at the back of the figure near the front of the line. It was as if she would disappear with the blink of an eye. Although he could only see the back of her head, he was sure that it was Lucia. Spencer noticed Dalen's change. Finally, Lucia turned around, revealing her familiar face, with a smile plastered on her face. Dalen couldn't help but be stunned. It's her. He finally found her. Lucia didn't notice Dalen or Spencer, and she didn't know that she was being watched. After they reached the front of the line, she followed Cynthia up to the cross. Lucia started stroking it, but she stopped as she thought of Dalen. Should she pray for Dalen? If she didn't bless him, she wouldn't be able to think of anyone else. However, just as she was at a loss, someone blocked her path. Lucia froze, instantly raising her eyes. However, when she met those familiar eyes, Lucia almost forgot about everything else. 
Was this a person who looked like Dalen? Or was she hallucinating? However, the feeling coming from Dalen was so strong that no one could ignore him. Lucia snapped out of her daze and turned to run. However, in the next second, she was dragged back. Lucia froze in shock. I finally found you. Dalen's low and hoarse voice sounded in her ear. It made Lucia dizzy. Had Dalen been looking for her? Why didn't he give her any freedom? Was it really necessary to be so aggressive? Let me go! Lucia struggled to escape his grasp. She could only persuade him with her words. Still running? Dalen asked. This was a solemn church, and their scene started to attract the attention of others. I won't run, Lucia said reluctantly. You can't run. Only after Dalen finished speaking did he let her go. Lucia retreated two steps back as soon as she was free. She looked at Dalen with a guarded look and said, If you have anything to say, let's talk about it after we leave this place. Then she turned around and went to find Cynthia. She pulled Cynthia away, who had been stopped by Spencer, and walked down the stairs. Cynthia whispered, Are these the ones that collect seller fees? Lucia didn't want to scare Cynthia, so she said, No, they're just some people I know. Someone who likes you? Cynthia asked. Lucia was stunned by the question. She didn't want to look at Dalen, who was following closely behind her, so she said, No. Cynthia sensed that something was wrong and stopped asking questions. Once they were clear of the crowds, Dalen pulled Lucia to the side. Dalen looked at her flustered face, which had turned red from the cold wind, making his heart clench. He was left speechless as he stared intently at Lucia. Exerting a little more strength in his arm, he pulled Lucia closer to him. Dalen still didn't say anything, and Lucia was dumbfounded. Her eyes were filled with puzzlement and astonishment. Dalen had appeared so suddenly. Lucia was about to push Dalen away. However, how could she resist Dalen's strength? After being separated for such a long time, Dalen needed her as close as possible for him to feel at ease. Lucia said angrily, Are you crazy? Dalen slightly opened his eyes. The light in them was deep. At such a close distance, Lucia's eyes couldn't help but blink. I found you. Finally. Dalen's voice was low and hoarse, and his black eyes stared straight at Lucia. Lucia felt her heart tremble. She turned her face to the side and said, Didn't I tell you on the phone that I would come back after the New Year's celebration? If you continue to control me like this, it will only make me unhappy. What made Lucia so confused was how Dalen found her here. How was I supposed to celebrate the New Year without you? Dalen's words still couldn't cure his overbearing personality. Lucia frowned as she heard Dalen say he couldn't celebrate the new year without her. She looked at Dalen and said, How you celebrate the new year has nothing to do with me. Anyway, I won't be going back. I'll celebrate the new year here. Are you sure you want to spend the new year here? Dalen asked. Lucia was startled. Dalen, you can't force me to go back with you. This is my freedom we're talking about here. Dalen looked at the old lady not far away. You're celebrating at her home? Is that a problem? Her children aren't coming back to celebrate with her, and she's lonely. I promised her that I'd stay to celebrate. So, Dalen, go back. I promise you that I will return after the new year. Lucia didn't know why Dalen was so anxious to find her. Was that really necessary? Or could it be that his obsession with her had reached a warped state? While Lucia was lost in thought, she felt Dalen grab her hand. Her ring finger felt a chill. She lowered her head and saw the pink diamond ring that she had taken off. Dalen had put it on her again. Dalen, you... Lucia didn't know she should feel helpless or angry. How many times have I told you? Why do you insist on going against me at every turn? Maybe you should stop when I tell you to. Dalen's face turned dark. 
You still dare to say that to me? What did you do to the ring? I can't take it off. Lucia got angry when she thought of this and tried to get the ring off her finger. She hadn't settled the score with him yet. Did he come to threaten her? I found a way that you can never get it off. Dalen stared at her with his deep and unfathomable black eyes. Lucia knew the look in his eyes, and she also understood Dalen's tyranny. However, she didn't understand why Dalen did this. She was already mentally prepared. When she went back, if Dalen wanted a divorce, she would accept. Why did he have to put a ring back on her? Let's go. Dalen pulled Lucia towards the car. Dalen, I won't go back with you. Lucia struggled, so angry that tears welled up in her eyes, but she was still dragged into the car. Dalen saw that she was crying and reached out his hand to wipe the tears off her face. He coaxed her gently. What are you crying for? I don't want to go back. Don't you understand? Lucia sobbed. Fine, I'll take you there. Dalen's black eyes looked at her warmly with a deep, doting expression. Lucia was stunned. Take me where? Wherever you want to go. Cynthia's home? Yes. Lucia looked out of the window and saw Cynthia being ushered into the car behind them. She couldn't believe it. Dalen, you... Lucia was speechless. Then let's celebrate the new year here. Dalen's compromise caused Lucia's small mouth to twitch, but she still didn't say anything. Anyway, it was fine as long as Dalen didn't force her to go back. Why did Dalen come here in the first place? Just to find out where she was so he could control her movements? Lucia didn't say a word, while Dalen just stared at her face. Lucia was unable to break free. Dalen held her tightly and then buried his face in her neck, not moving at all. Lucia's body instantly froze. This confused Lucia. What was Dalen doing? It was so intimate, yet it seemed so desperate. Did she misunderstand? This was the first time that Lucia had received such treatment, so she must have misunderstood. Dalen was so powerful. How could he do such a thing? Lucia didn't move, but she really wanted to ask Dalen if he could let her go. She wanted to ask him why he hugged her like that and even buried himself in her neck. Did he not want Victoria anymore? Or did he not care about the baby? Lucia did not understand Dalen. Dalen hugged Lucia as she stiffly sat there. Soon they arrived at Cynthia's residence. Lucia got out of the car, and Dalen got out of the car behind her. Lucia looked at him and said, You can go back now. I'm already home. Although this place wasn't her home, she had been living here recently and treated it as her home. Dalen didn't say anything. He just followed Lucia into Cynthia's living room. Lucia wanted to stop him. Dalen... However, Dalen walked inside as if he didn't hear her protests. Lucia chased after him anxiously. Dalen, what are you doing? I'm having a look at your recent residence. After Dalen entered, the room suddenly became smaller. Cynthia looked at Dalen and then looked at Lucia. Lucia had to smile at Cynthia to show her that everything was okay. Dalen looked around the room, then looked at Cynthia and asked, I'm Lucia's husband. Can I also stay here with her? While Lucia was still stunned, Cynthia nodded. Yes, of course. Lucia was displeased. She stepped forward and protested. You can't stay here. Why not? Dalen asked. Because, uh, because there are no more rooms, Lucia said. I'll sleep in your room, Dalen said calmly. However, the effect of his words smashed into Lucia's heart. Lucia walked up and dragged Dalen out of the room. Dalen, what are you trying to do? It's the new year. What are you doing here? Lucia didn't know what Dalen was trying to do. Even if he didn't spend the new year with Victoria, what about Linda? He should be with his mother. Why would he spend the holiday in this remote mountain valley? I'm here to celebrate the new year with you. Dalen said. Lucia gritted her teeth and glared at Dalen. 
Just go home. I'll be wherever you are, Dalen insisted. The clear light in Lucia's eyes moved slightly as she stared into Dalen's serious and calm eyes. Are you kidding me? If you're here, won't your mother be alone at home? Dalen's black eyes stared fixedly at Lucia. Lucia clearly didn't feel that there was anything wrong with her question, but under Dalen's gaze, she lowered her eyes. After a moment, Dalen asked, You want to be here alone? Right. Lucia felt her head buzzing as she answered the question. Originally, she had run away to celebrate New Year's by herself. Dalen's eyes were as calm as a lake. In a flash, he stretched out his hand to hold Lucia's head and moved closer. Lucia stubbornly held his gaze. I worked too hard to find you to let you celebrate New Year's by yourself. Fortunately, I was able to make it in time, Dalen whispered. Lucia looked at Dalen's eyes. Her heart was beating chaotically. She didn't understand why Dalen said that. It was as if he'd spent so much effort to find her and truly didn't want her to celebrate New Year's alone. Was it really true? Dalen had seemed so cruel and angry on the phone. What changed? Lucia wanted to ask what was on his mind, but in the end, she didn't. There was one thing she understood. She couldn't stop Dalen from doing what he wanted to do. He had finally found her, so why would he let her celebrate New Year's here alone? Dalen's long arms tightened around Lucia as he hugged her tightly, holding her to his chest. He had begun his search angry. He wanted to find her, punish her, and make her regret running away. But right now, he only wanted to hug her like this. Lucia had no way to resist and could only be hugged silently. Eventually, she said, I'm going to help Cynthia cook. Spencer is here to help, Dalen said without loosening his hold. Dalen, how did you find me here? Lucia asked. Dalen didn't say anything and just hugged her tightly. Lucia didn't ask any further. It wasn't until they had dinner that Lucia was sure Dalen was going to spend the new year here. It felt like a dream. There was delicious food around a small square table. She, Dalen, and Cynthia were sitting at the table. Lucia couldn't believe it. Dalen spooned some food into her bowl. Lucia was stunned for a moment before meeting Dalen's deep gaze. Since she couldn't just throw the food out in front of Cynthia, she could only stuff the food into her mouth. Dalen was being too kind, too considerate. He continued to hold her. It was as if his attention was focused on only Lucia. Lucia also noticed Dalen's actions and expression when he was eating. Dalen was born in a wealthy family, so he was used to the high-quality food in the mansion. This simple meal should be hard for him to swallow, right? However, when Lucia saw that Dalen didn't have any expression of disgust, she just ate calmly. Cynthia looked especially happy when Dalen got seconds. Dalen's presence in her home really made Cynthia flabbergasted. Back in the city, Linda sat on the sofa in her home and drank her tea. When she came back to her senses, she found that the tea was cold. She placed it on the coffee table and stopped drinking. Linda, you should start eating now. Otherwise, the food will get cold. Her maid walked over and said, If it's cold, just keep it warm, Linda said as she looked at the door. The maid knew what Linda was thinking. She was waiting for Dalen to come for his New Year's Eve meal. However, at this moment, there was no sign of Dalen. Don't just stand there. Go call Dalen and ask if he's back. Linda's temper was about to rise. She was extremely annoyed. All right, I'll go now. The maid had been calling the mansion since the afternoon. However, they always said that Dalen hadn't come back. Actually, even if she were to call again now, there wouldn't be a different answer. But looking at Linda's expression, the maid didn't have the heart to say anything else and went to make the phone call. After the call ended, she walked to Linda's side and had a hard time forming words. However, 
Linda saw through her silence. He's not coming over. Presumably, he hasn't found the young mistress yet. Linda sneered. He doesn't even care about eating with me anymore because of this stupid girl. This is something that would never have happened in the past. Madame, people say that a daughter-in-law relationship is the most difficult problem to solve. I understand now how true that is. When Linda was young and married into the Patrick family, she had never experienced daughter-in-law issues, but this was because Dalen's grandmother had already passed away. And now that she had directly become a mother-in-law, the feelings in her heart were so painful. Maybe Dalen had found Lucia, but wasn't able to make it back in time. That's all, the maid suggested. Then why not answer the phone? He won't even call me back. The maid was speechless. Linda thought of something and was shocked. Say, could it be that Dalen wasn't willing to see me because he knew that I'm the one who drugged Lucia? Didn't you make Lucia promise to never tell your son? That shouldn't be the case. Presumably, even if Mr. Patrick was angry, it was because of that photo, the maid reminded Linda. Linda didn't care about the pictures. What she cared more about was the drug. As long as Dalen didn't know about the drug, everything else was fine. In the village, Lucia ate and tried to avoid Dalen's long stares by going to the kitchen to help Cynthia with preparing more food. Why are you here? I don't need your help. Cynthia said, trying to kick her out. As she spoke, she glanced toward the dining room. Lucia knew what she was looking for. Actually, Cynthia, I'm already married, Lucia said uncomfortably. Cynthia didn't show any disbelief, so she asked, Did the two of you get into a fight? Lucia nodded with a reddened face. It's normal for a couple to be at odds with each other, but you can't just run away after making a fuss. Fortunately, you met me. If you met someone else, what would he do about it? But I know you're a kind woman, and if it wasn't serious, you wouldn't have run away. But I still want you to consider your own safety, Cynthia advised. I know you were saying this for my own good, but don't you find it strange? I'm only 20 years old, and I've already been married for more than half a year. Lucia said with a blush. Cynthia laughed at what Lucia said. What are you laughing at? Lucia demanded. Do you know how old I was when I was married? Cynthia never said anything about it, and Lucia was curious. How old? 18 years old. So young? Lucia thought about what she was doing at 18. She had just entered college and hadn't fully understood the world. Yes, girls in the countryside are usually no more than 20 years old when they get married. In my generation, getting married young was nothing strange. Cynthia laughed. Lucia thought for a moment and said, I envy you. You must have had a very simple life, and I wish I could have that. Isn't your life good now? Your husband has been searching for you everywhere. He's very devoted to you, Cynthia advised her. Lucia didn't know how to tell Cynthia about her and Dalen's actual relationship. It was too complicated. Furthermore, it was impossible for her to say such a thing openly. Even Dalen didn't know. Lucia thought of something and said, Cynthia, can we have another room? If you give me a quilt, I'll tidy it up. Why do you have to tidy up a room? Cynthia didn't understand. So he can sleep in a separate room, Lucia explained. That won't do. How can couples sleep in separate beds? It's not good for the marriage, Cynthia disagreed. In the end, Cynthia wouldn't agree to give her another quilt, let alone a bed. Lucia had no choice but to give up. When Lucia and Cynthia came out of the kitchen... It was already dark outside. The sky and the mountains seemed darker than it was in the city. At this moment, the villagers who had just finished their New Year's Eve meal were already setting off firecrackers. The crackling filled the air. 
At this moment, an explosive sound was heard, and the entire sky lit up. Lucia and Cynthia were both stunned. Walking out of the house, they saw fireworks blossoming, one after another, in the dark sky. Each one occupied more than half of the sky. The whole sky lit up. It was so beautiful that no one wanted to blink. There was only one person who could be responsible for this. Dalen. It even attracted the attention of the other villagers. I've never seen such beautiful fireworks before, Cynthia said with joy. Lucia hadn't seen it either, even back in the city. This was her first year since marrying Dalen. Their first fireworks. Another firework exploded in the sky. Lucia saw Dalen's tall figure standing not far away. Under the illumination of the fireworks, it flickered between bright and dim. Lucia had thought that she would be celebrating New Year's alone. But unexpectedly, Dalen appeared. He even had a New Year's Eve meal with her here. This was also the first time that Lucia had not celebrated the New Year with her family. She thought she would have nothing. Just as Lucia was staring at Dalen's silhouette in the daze, Dalen turned around. Lucia was a little flustered as she retracted her gaze. She raised her head and looked at the fireworks in the sky. The fireworks were beautiful and fleeting. She wondered if the peace and happiness in front of her was also temporary. To Dalen, what looked beautiful wasn't the fireworks, but the person standing under them. His eyes were filled with desire. After the fireworks, Cynthia went back to her room early. Lucia felt that Cynthia did it on purpose because she didn't usually go to bed that early. When Lucia saw Dalen, she immediately turned around and went to her room. After entering, she turned around and closed the door. However, a large hand blocked the door and prevented her from closing it. Lucia couldn't close the door even if she tried. Her strength couldn't compete with Dalen's. Dalen wasn't angry. He looked at her with a smile in his eyes. Lucia looked uneasy. What do you want to do? Sleep, of course. You can sleep somewhere else. I don't want to... There's no other room to sleep in, Dalen interrupted. You can sleep in the car then. It wasn't that Lucia was being rude, but Dalen's car was even more luxurious than this room. What was he doing in this small room? I can't sleep in the car, Dalen argued. Dalen was going to sleep here, and Lucia knew that she couldn't change Dalen's attitude, so she let go of his hand angrily. Then I'll sleep somewhere else. With that, she turned around to leave, but Dalen kicked the door shut before she could walk through it. Didn't you miss me? Dalen asked. How could I miss you? If I missed you, I would have come home. Lucia would not admit that she missed Dalen. Even if she had occasionally thought of him, she wouldn't admit it. Really? Dalen pressed. Lucia's face slanted to the side. Not a bit. Before Lucia could finish her sentence, she heard Dalen say, I missed you. What did you say? Lucia asked in disbelief. She thought there was something wrong with her ears because she couldn't believe Dalen's straightforward words. I've been thinking about you since the first day you left. You, what are you saying? Lucia's face turned hot. It was just like the nervousness of being confessed to. Lucia felt that it wasn't suitable at all. She and Dalen had been in a fight for such a long time. She was unable to react to this sudden change. Lucia felt as if her entire body had become as stiff as a rock. Lucia steadied her breathing and forced herself to ask this question that had been in her heart for a long time. You don't care about the baby anymore? What do you mean now? Dalen's deep eyes darkened. After a moment, he said in a low and hoarse voice, It's not important anymore. Not important? Lucia's mind was filled with these two words. Lucia herself knew the severity of this incident. And Dalen was ready to just forgive her? 
Wasn't this a bit too much? I'm going to take a bath. Dalen let go of her. If he didn't let go now, his suppressed emotions would be exposed. Lucia felt her body lighten, and she was stunned. When she came back to her senses, Dalen had already gone to take a bath. Lucia stood there in a daze, thinking, shouldn't he let me go first? Why is Dalen so weird? Then she thought that she should be glad. Lucia had an uneasy look on her face as she sat down on the edge of the bed. As she sat down, the bed creaked. She suspected that Dalen wouldn't even be able to fall asleep. At the same time, Lucia's face turned red as she thought of what happened to the bed at her father's house last time Dalen and her had slept together. This was Cynthia's house. They were in someone else's home. Dalen wouldn't insist on tonight, right? After Dalen was done, Lucia silently went to take a bath. When she got back from the shower, Dalen was already on the bed. Lucia stood still beside the bed. Come on. Dalen looked at her. Lucia looked at the bed, struggling in her heart once again. Then she turned around. Dalen seemed to know that she wanted to run. He reached out and grabbed her wrist. Lucia was unable to escape. It was like being trapped in a cage with nowhere to run. Let's be together. Dalen's low and hoarse voice sounded beside her ear. Lucia pretended to be calm and didn't move, but she stiffened. After being separated from Dalen for such a long time, suddenly being like this made her feel a sense of unfamiliarity. It made her want to dodge his advances. Lucia also did not expect Dalen to say that they should be together. She thought she would be alone. His appearance made the night seem so different. Relax, Dalen urged. How can I relax when you act like this? I'll sit next to you. Lucia felt the same guarded feeling sitting next to him. If you don't relax, then we'll go home, Dalen threatened. Lucia trembled in fright when she heard Dalen's threatening voice. Lucia had no room for resistance. She could only try to relax her body. The temperature under the blanket tonight was warm. It heated her cold body like a furnace. However, Lucia was unwilling to compromise. After tonight, shouldn't you go back tomorrow? Come with me. Of course not. I need to wait a little longer. Then I'll stay with you. Then what if I want to stay here for another month? The same goes for a year. Lucia did not think Dalen's words were a joke, so she asked, You're not going to care about being in the city and running your business anymore? Nothing is as important as you. Dalen's words made some ripples in Lucia's heart, but the uneasiness in her heart was also so strong. It was as if all of this was an illusion. She couldn't act as if what Dalen did before was nothing. In front of her, he had flirted with other women, and he was even having an ambiguous relationship with Victoria. Thus, she turned a blind eye to his doting gaze. Lucia thought she didn't care about how he felt about her, but she found herself less generous and more heartless. Dalen, you should go back tomorrow. Since you already know where I'm staying, there's no need to live here with me. I'll be back in a week at the most. Lucia didn't know who she was trying to persuade. Then we'll stay for a week and go back together, Dalen said. Afterwards, Lucia decided to not speak anymore. There was a very small window in the room, and every night when Lucia turned off the lights, the moonlight would shine in from there. It was still the same now, but it was much fainter. Lucia had thought she was really looking forward to the new year. Not long after, her long eyelashes became very heavy. Not long after, she fell asleep. Her breathing was deep and even. Dalen's eyes were filled with deep passion as he watched her. He continued to hold her, waiting for time to pass. Fortunately, he had been just in time, and she was not left alone on New Year's Eve. On the other hand, New Year's Eve in the city was extremely lively, Jeff was drinking and having fun in a room where men and women socialized very openly. 
Jeff was admiring it in a good mood. Mr. Holmes, do you like my outfit? A model asked Jeff seductively. Jeff didn't respond. How annoying. <laughs> the female model giggled, turned around, and jumped onto the stage. Of course, she could tell that Jeff wasn't interested in her at all. <laughs> 